Hey everyone, this is Joe from Thunk Tank Podcast, and thank you so much for joining us here on our very special, very merry holiday, Christmas, every other holiday festive episode. Um, This is probably our, our final episode of the year, so we wanted to do something a little fun talk a little bit about what the holidays mean to us and uh, what holiday parties are really all about, whether holiday work parties, holiday family parties, uh, wh- what really is the spirit of, of uh, thunkmas in our situation. So anyways, thanks again so much for joining us. Thanks again for a fantastic year. And if you like what you hear, check out more of our content at thunktankpodcast.com. Uh, tweet at us. We're on Twitter. We're on all the places where you listen to podcasts. Apple, iTunes, Twitter. Uh, I said that. So yeah, hit us up. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have questions. Let us know what you think about uh, the holiday spirit and what it means to you and what you would like to hear more of moving forward. We would love to hear your ideas as well. So hope you enjoy and uh, Merry Thunkmas to you all. Thanks again. See you in the tank. Attention, humans. This is a Thunk Tank. Please insert this podcast directly into your nearest orifice for viewing pleasure. Okay, you ready? Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Thunk Tank. (laughs) Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. Welcome, come into our, come into our Thunk Tank. Luke, don't switch to the other peanuts. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Come in the tank. We're thinking. And we're thinking. <laughs> and we're thunked. And we're thunked. Oh my god, I'm probably more beer than man if we go far enough back at this point. that works joe laughed a little bit in the three i'm sorry he was too intense about it no he knows how to do it we're 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 more professional than you yeah that's what you are yeah joe i've been studying audio engineering and not learning it at the school of whatever it is how you're dressed right now at at that institute yeah that's right did you come if you're listening from from the institute if you're listening to us you'll want to check out the youtube video for this johnny's in his classic robe his excuse to wear a robe as a Halloween costume being a Jedi. Fucking mm-hmm. headphones with the, the label still on Very, them. Very uh, in, 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 in <laughs> vogue tag. right now. Star Wars has oh, just yeah. come out. I heard it was weekend. awful. I heard the music was pretty dope. So I'd go just to hear music on great the music movie is theater always speakers. Pretty epic. You know? Star Wars music has, you know, in fact, they. The uh, opening when they the music first oh, starts, you're just one like, of the best your little kid brain just, just lights it's up. It's like that and Lion King are the two best movie music opens, I think. Well, history, you know the right? story behind that open, right? Uh, it's the Flash Gordon, right? If you but look, like if you look at any movie that came out seventy seven, I think was the first one or before that. Mm-hmm. There's title cards, like it shows the name of the movie, and then it shows starring, and like it, and that was a big deal with the Screen Actors Guild because they're like, no, no, the actors get like they fought mm-hmm. for that as a union. Like you have to put the credits at the beginning. I believe you making this up. And yeah. he paid like some big fine because he's like, no, I don't want to ruin the like sus- the, the suspension of disbelief. I want it to just boom, it just the scroll and it goes right from that and it just It really does down work to the, too. The first battle. It does work and that, like how many movies start with a cold open like that now? Yeah. And they also said they that the t- the only thing they knew they had going for them that was like definitely going to be a win for the movie cuz they thought who knows, this will probably maybe just flop. There's no way really to tell because it's Star Wars, but they knew the music was killing cuz they got John Williams who had done Jaws, which I, I'm pretty sure came out before. So they were certain that at least the music's going to be on point. I'm and pretty it's sure. Become iconic music. I don't even think. I'm pretty he, sure he Spielberg the music talked anymore, him but. into that too. He was going to do like disco music or like the 20th Century Fox or whoever wanted him to do like. You like know, that disco Star Wars stuff, disco it's theme? The 70s. Yeah. It's the future. Like it should yeah. be lasers and disco and futuristic well, so stuff. What John Williams did is he, is he, like the story is, is a pretty basic, I'm not saying shell of a story in a negative way, but the. The, the outline of it is pretty basic good versus evil story. Yeah. And with it's also, obvious like Nazi connotations. Right. And it's also what? a lot of the music, a lot of the scores are pretty similar to uh, Gustav Holtz, The Planets. Yeah. It, 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 but it's also that he captures the magical quality, not in like a cheesy disco way, but in like a, like, uh, you know, 
Well, it's space it's opera. Deeply beautiful. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it, but it's, it's not. Saga. It's not like rock opera. In no, no, space. no, 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 no. It's yeah, like yeah. space opera. It, it's it's yeah. saga esque. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely. It, it almost has a, a Wagnerian. Like Wagner would have these themes that ha- each character or idea or love potion, whatever, has a chord or a theme or a light yeah. motif. They're called, and they carry through not only just one opera but many, many operas. It's called the Ring Cycle. <laughs> And you'll hear the same no, theme. Like, of the Rings, you da, idiot. Da, 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 da. When you hear that, that's like I think Siegfried. I sounded Siegfried's like Charlie theme. Brown. Da, 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 but like, da, so da, da. give give me your best rendition of Princess Leia's theme. I'm sorry, what? From Star Wars, it's the da, music. Da, 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 da. No, it's I think it's dun 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 Which one's Duh. that? Uh, some, bum, 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 beep, bum, beep, bum. Something about stormtroopers. Or no, no, no. That's that's the good melody. You can always that's tell which side is good and which no, side is evil. No, but it's them fighting stormtroopers. Um, I think it's them like when they're deciding to fight stormtroopers. The battle scene is usually like more action music, you know. But <laughs> This is a fantastic <laughs> holiday parties episode. Hey, folks, uh, <laughs> we're not driving today, so we're getting weird. Just like to model is, after the, what company formula. holiday yeah. parties would probably tend to do. We're having the Thunk Tank Podcast company holiday party live with you on Skype. Uh, <sighs> we're missing that's... our only two employees for this to be a holiday party, though. Wait, we have how many we have employees two employees? We have? <laughs> well, we have our fact checker, and then we have our, our medical... Uh, Oh, correspondent. Uh, correspondent. Yeah. Oh, I see. You have to use. Fancy Are we paying words. her? I mean, are we paying him? That's that's not relevant. Are we paying us? Is, I mean, if we're not paying beer. them, they definitely should have been invited to the party. But oh well, they're not here. So, so we've uh, all been to holiday parties, right? Specifically, uh, like company yeah. parties. I, th- I have I some funny we stories about, I wrote right? down. Yeah. But holiday parties Work of all parties. kind are are uh, on the table here to spark conversation. All right. So, uh, there, so there's only there's only two kinds of. Oh, there's only two reasons to go to. It. Let's talk about company parties first because they're very. That's a good place to start because we're also. I love how we just started with four minutes of Star, Star Wars, Wars and now we're like doing Star the Wars. Topic. Star Wars music <laughs> analysis. Yeah, uh, we're we're actually Luke and I are going to a holiday work party later. So yeah, we figured it. But there's apropos. only there's only two reasons to go mean? to a holiday Sounds party. Fancy, right? Is either one you have to because you're important in the company or the boss or the owner. You know, it's yeah. expected of you. You, you got to represent. And yeah. the like wives an have to mingle, so they talk good about you know, like oh, you know, like Frank's wife really, really had some nice things to say. Oh yeah, really? Frank's a good guy. Oh, the wives have to mingle, really. Y- well, it's one of those things where if, oh, if you go, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of sexist. But like if you go, you son of a bitch, it's not a big deal. But if you don't go, people will notice. You know those yeah, kind of right. corporate environment yeah. bullshits. Yeah. So there's that, and then there's the people that go because they go, I'm underappreciated, I'm undervalued and overworked. Let me this drink is this my resentment chance. out I'm of my getting, head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't get I don't get a bonus. Like this company doesn't give out fucking bonuses. But it's open bar. So all I get is a bar tab. So I'm gonna go and get lit and, and get my money's worth. This and is, at th- least that's, in my experience. that's the birth of all bad office Christmas parties is somebody because the environment is not with your friends, even a small amount of drunkenness is like a culture shock to that group hangout. So no, no, if you get different. blacked out it's and like, like do karaoke and it, start like it cursing. Is, it is like your family because if you have a family <laughs> that you don't funny. hang out or drink often, like you don't drink, you're not big daily drinkers, regular drinkers, but you don't hang out often and you get together for a holiday and you're drinking, that's when all the stuff comes out. Sure. I but mean, in, in a good uh, way. In, like, like in for example, office, like with cousins that you you never really drink with and then like... You all disappear from like a family party because there's a bar like a five minute walk away. You get like a different right. vibe of the hang than you would if you were just at Christmas. Because it, with office people too is or with work people at the party, these are people you see all the time sober, and you can't you can't confront each other the way you can in a family environment or with your friends. But alcohol makes you forget all that, and you start treating your coworkers like people, which is usually. Like a bad, a bad move because you're going to be more honest than that work environment usually calls for. <laughs> right. Um. I, I mean, I'm a fun, happy drunk, so I've gotten wasted at every holiday party. I think. Well, but Johnny, not only are you good at being like under control up to like a high volume of beer, like you have to like drink like 15 beers before we start to be like Johnny, stop being an idiot. Follow us. We're going home. Like, 
Like it yeah, takes a I lot for you to I, get to that stage where like you're becoming like an annoying like to be around drunk. But that's because I only drink beer too as part of it. Like I don't drink liquor or anything. And you're a big guy. Like you just have more volume that you can take than me, for example. Yeah. You've got like probably like at least fifty pounds on me. What do you think? Probably. I'm like two thirty five right now. Okay, I think I'm one sixty, so yeah, a bit more than that. <laughs> um so it <laughs> makes sense like that I can't drink. It'd be like you know, if you're like out drinking as a twenty one year old, like a sixteen like year old like, beer, uh, or fourteen year old. Every- if every beer we both drink, you gave like a third of it to a seventy pound child next to you, right? And yeah. then we, we said that we were drinking evenly. It was, We've worked. Why, on wait, that I math can't. Before. I just dump a third of it down the drain. Why do I have to give it to a child? <laughs> because that's the sp- the weight difference between us is about the size of a child. I know, but I don't think that math checks out. <laughs> uh, I mean, no, but we calculated who's the one who this a while ago, here? Johnny. Where I I have to drink for every what was it for every three beers you drink it's i drink one two. point no it's 1.4 we did the weight and how much yeah. more i weigh than you i'm right. almost half as much more than you yeah you're almost like a really small person more than me right so oh no I, so i don't have the little kid time. taking my beer you do yeah it's like i have to drink the whole beer and you can dump half of it to some other 70 pound kid no he fights which a is little inside kid your body for beer i think is what's happening no no i'm saying if you do that with six beers and i do that with six beers Versus if you actually drank all six beers, that would be unfair. Right, but for that's what reality even. is. is but it? for it to it's be just even, the, the, you would drink the little you would drink ki- a the little third kid that weighs seventy beer. pounds is all in your meat body. Yeah, but it, it, it doesn't matter. In any the, case, uh, people handle is, holiday drinking parties differently. I think I just thought of the perfect title for this episode: How to Have a Fantastic Holiday Office Party. Office oh, party. here, can I give you? <laughs> Can I give you a, a solid tip if you forget all the other rules? Because this is also my rule for weddings. We're going through family rules? functions. Okay. Yeah, so we make and it the wedding episode. Rule number 10. Go, Johnny. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> some of our finest work. <laughs> so so it's, it's one of the, it actually is one of the wedding rules. And it's, so you want to find out who is going to be the problem. And if you've been to Christmas parties in the past. Wait, what do you mean like, by problem? If you pay attention wow. to the job that you're at, you can just tell who's gonna like this person's really pissed they almost quit or like you know they fired her boyfriend and she's really pissed and like we all know she wants to quit but she's looking for another job like you know that person is the one likely if they show up hot to the christmas party it's like okay see where this is going i haven't worked enough real jobs to know this but same yeah i have to say i I have not been to a lot of office parties but i've been to enough well the office parties are like restaurant people and they're always like like raging yeah they're all they're all i've been to some music store ones too like yeah yeah, at any time. But oh, I'm sorry, just saying, you, it, it, you can usually tell. I've always worked for small companies too, but I guess if you're within a department at a big company, it still applies. And you want to see who is going to be the wild one that's going, that's just drinking too fast. Like, oh wow, it's seven thirty, mm. and this party goes till like they're 10, a cocktail and they're hour, there's, and they're if wasted. they stop drinking now, there's no way they can drive home. Wait, and they're but not we're stopping. doing that. Like, you, you just spot that. So the point is, you spot that yeah. person. <laughs> Luke Once just stared at me for like five seconds after I said that and then said, yeah. <laughs> if you spot that person, you just have to stay a few drinks behind them. Oh, so just, they're kind of the It's kind of like when you're on the benchmark. highway yeah, and, and you're worried about getting pulled exactly. over for speeding, but you see a guy speed past you. You're like, mine's right. will keep doing 75 because that guy was doing 85 and he's going to pass right. the, the hypothetical police <laughs> car. Except, hiding yeah. except I know people who have been pulled over who have said, but officer, people were speeding by me and they say, he's yeah. He's like, yeah, I decided not to you, catch the fast one. Do you know what they always <laughs> say? Yeah, is, yeah, but I didn't pull them over. Right. So the how does one, that fit into the your one equation? Speeding ticket <laughs> That's my I question. Got. The what? one speeding ticket I've ever gotten. Yeah. I only have ever gotten it. It was once. on your cross country drive, right? What? No. Oh no, no. I just got a warning that time. Uh, I got off. He talked but his way the out. The one of actual that. ticket I got written for, the cop I was in a pack of cars and we were all speeding and I was in the back. The cop slowed down to behind the pa- he he had to slow down to pull me over because he yeah. was going fast. They pull than over me. the beta. They're not gonna pull over the alpha. It's not worth it. No. Yeah. No, yeah. if they're no, an that alpha, person they're like, well, I know what you're That doing. person yeah. could be methed out. You know, that, that me, yeah, like, I'm clearly just trying to get alpha. somewhere in a hurry. I'll take the ticket. We we were leaving a yeah. um, a Mets game once, and the person driving was sober, but we were all pretty wasted in the back seat. And we were merging. It was like weird traffic. So bas- awful. basically, I guess we had to cut off somebody very suddenly, and the guy kind of honked and gave us the finger. And so, like, we kind of opened the back window and just started being like, fuck 
fuck you, yeah. you know, yeah. wasted from a, from, a, from a bet game. Yeah. And we were sitting in that, like, uh, like a rich friend of ours gave us a ticket. So it was like free beer, free food, like kind of awesome box right on the field kind of shit. Nice. And we were, we would just like took advantage of the free Bud Lights, right? <laughs> and this guy... That's was awesome. an off-duty police officer, so he holds up a badge. He's like, "Fuck me, I'm pulling you fucking over." He goes, "Pull over," and then the kid driving's like, "Wait, what should I do?" We're like, "Go!" Obviously, don't pull over because it's probably a drunk cop who just got out of the game too, and he's just like, his <laughs> ego was hurt that like he he can't pull us over. He, you're in a convertible, like you're just <laughs> flashing a random right. badge he's, at us. He's not also, in a it's car. Not yeah. illegal. The police it car. is not illegal to tell a uniformed officer to go fuck themselves. So just the fact that it would be legal for him to then pull the car of drunk, wasted monkeys over, though, would it? If he was in a cop car, he'd just be like, all right, well, fuck me. Like, whoop, whoop. Well, especially if he is drunk. Well, I thought he he seemed like why would he be in a screaming match with clearly a bunch of drunk, like 23 year olds leaving Mets? Yeah. (laughs) Like, obviously, you're just dealing with a car of drunk people that tried to merge and maybe like annoyed you a little bit, you know? (laughs) That would be a good Probably episode. Probably the Mets back, lost. That's why back, he was in a bad mood or something. Backseat car stories. Hmm. We have a lot of those. Oh, like somebody peeing on the chicken cutlet. I thought I, it was a hamburger. Oh, no, that no, was no it was a turkey burger, one. I think. It was a turkey burger. I, I brought like three patties of turkey burgers. I think my mom like gave them to me or something. I was like, let me make use of but these. But we were I'll, also coming I'll bring back them for my from drunk a, friends after this concert. It was uh, a concert. Why did, did, I, did they keep in my backpack? It was definitely the summer, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, like, why did Luke have a, a Ziploc bag full of I turkey burgers? I think I forgot burgers. about them. I, I didn't want to eat them. And so like, by the no, time I remembered, I was like. Concert. What? What was it? It was on the way to the concert. No, but we didn't finish. Oh, them. maybe it was on, it was in between pre gaming for the concert and going to the concert. Maybe. Anyways, but our friend really had to pee, and we were on the BQE, I believe, right? <laughs> yeah, and he peed into the bag. He's like, "Is there any rest stops?" I'm like, "Dude, this is the BQE this in is, traffic. There's no rest stops. What yeah. are you talking about? We're in traffic." Oh yeah, he peed in it, and then he was like, well, <laughs> "He peed into like, the bag of turkey burgers." The car. Yeah, and then he threw and it out it, the window. He right? threw it out of the. You, you know, he just placed it next to the car because you were in standstill traffic, so everyone saw him <laughs> put like. <laughs> Mar- a, a hot bag of piss burgers piss with outside. turkey burgers, <laughs> and be like, "What?" It but was like one of. By the way, it wasn't food. like a sandwich bag. It was it like the small kind that fits one sandwich. It was one of those gallon size bags because it, it it was just like it was it, it was big enough that it could theor- it could realistically hold a, a do, decent pee. Do you want, do you want my take on that whole situation? Was that was definitely the best holiday office party. In, in memory. I think so. Wouldn't you say? No, Johnny? no. Honestly, why did we pick this topic? It's the easiest topic to just bounce like a ping pong ball from on topic to off topic. But this is what topic. you do at office parties. A lot of office parties start, and That's why I we did this. this with is, we're you're, playing you're, 4D chess here. Yeah, that's what we're doing. You're in the mode I, of, oh, yeah. So, yeah, this week. Oh, hey, Bob. Bob from accounting. So, this uh, yeah, this quarter's report. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Did you get the Johnson, uh, Johnson uh, spreadsheet? Oh, yeah, that Johnson. Yeah. You going to Steve's barbecue this weekend? You know, and then you see, transition I've, into other I've minutia. To, I actually have a lot of holiday stories because I've been to a lot of parties because I usually have like two jobs. All right, all right, all right. Tell us your best your best holiday story. Holiday what? party story. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You give us your, your best. Ho- I can't even. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you're doing <laughs> like a, a gay Jay Leno or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's good, it was a good story. It was a good story. <laughs> I that think you're trying story. to do like a Long Island like <laughs> Yenta type, but yeah. That, yeah, I was uh, trying to do Joe like the Long it. Island mom that you you ring the doorbell and she goes, "Hey, how are ya? How's how's your mom?" <laughs> Guess what my name is? Probably Karen. Yeah. Karen. How's Karen? How's Julie? Uh, Jessica. Can I put on some coffee for you? I got bagels and the paper. You got to get a paper paper. Yeah, I mean, you didn't get these the electronic paper. papers the paper. just don't cut it. Tell us a good story, Daddy. A bagel, paper, coffee, Luke spilling beer all over his crotch. <laughs> You gotta walk the dog. What's happening, man? I'm having a rough day. <laughs> so much beer on your crotch. I wonder. If, I wonder if the video got that. I was just like talking to Johnny, being Jay Leno, and forgot that I made my empty beer become a full beer. So I was just like letting my beer fall like this with my lazy this is hand. Be a great office party later. I can't. Oh wait. yeah. By I the did, way, this podcast is night. our office party pregame. Luke, you spilt so much beer directly oh on your God. crotch. Oh my like, God. Luke, it wasn't even around the crotch. I, I was... spilt the 70 pounds of like side kid <laughs> beer did. on my crotch. <laughs> it was so that just 70 do that pounds every beer. Or... Yeah, and we'll be even. Yeah, now we're going to be even. Let's go beer for beer, Johnny. Are, are you ple- are you so... sated, beer genie? Uh, yeah, I'm very pleased. That's the sacrificial <laughs> offering of beer. Okay, so the tell the beer gene. So I'm tell actually us. not drinking beer yet because it, it's it was like noon when you guys called me here. It's pretty early <laughs> on a Sunday. 
I have stuff to do, so I, right. I'm we're on a three-hour difference now. This, but Gee. I am drinking a bourbon barrel-aged coffee bean. Oh, coffee. I thought you Ooh. were going to say a bourbon barrel-aged like whiskey, po- whiskey porter or something. <laughs> yeah. like. No, it's coffee, but it tastes kind of bourbony. It's wonderful. <laughs> That's so this funny. Not, I, I hope the video brewing. caught that. That would be Diego. hilarious. Luke, I was I was watching that happening, and I'm like, I'm definitely not going to say anything. I'm just going to let you it just keep slipped happening. it into your explanation. <laughs> but by the time you said it, I felt the coolness on my balls. <laughs> I was like, oh god, something's happening. I that literally was, did the same thing the other night. We were I was, was arguing amazing. or just we were yelling back and forth, me and Kara, about the impeachment going on. Kara's and I'm pouring thing. my beer like this and I'm like yelling something about the constitution and then I realize my hand is wet, my leg is wet, <laughs> and like I'm still and I turn, like I feel it and I turn oh, and I I'm still it. pouring I before I go, Oh. And yeah. yeah I, so I've done the same thing. But, but that, I actually have a car backseat of a car story that has to do with holiday party. Ooh. Okay. Oh, go for it. That's way more on that target seems than like we've it's been on so topic. far. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't exactly young, but I was younger. I was like 25, 26. Too old for this to be happening. Yeah, that's not young. Well, we and, went to the okay. holiday party in one of these little, like, <laughs> kind of Danfordy. That's the local reference. But kind of these cottagey, like, hotel on the water event space that New England's full of that are just, like, shitty, run down, and overpriced. So it was at one of those. And when we left, we had, we all lived in the same area. So one of our friends, one of my coworkers' mom actually picked us up. <laughs> so, uh, and we all thought we were getting a ride from him. So about seven people crammed into this like Nissan Sentry, Sentra or whatever. Oh, God. And so like two in the front. Kara and then was like sitting in the middle four or seat. Or five in the back. The, so, yeah. So it was, it was me and a guy on one side, two girls on the other, and then a girl sitting on the lap. That's like, so right illegal. Us. And Kara's in the middle, and she turns. She goes, "We're gonna have to switch seats." And they laugh. She's like, "No, I'm about to throw up. We're gonna have to switch seats." Oh no! Like right now. And See, like, Kara's cool just... though. She knows that she won't just throw up. Like she's got the the one minute warning. A lot of she's a like, lot yeah. of girls would just or guys would just. I, I see. I'm learning. I'm in, I'm impressed. They would just throw up. You know. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And they would have. No they would just be like we're five, four, three, two, one. Uh. There would be no buffering. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We were coming along those windy North Country roads on the North Shore, Long Island there. So, like, going around the turns, you tell she was not doing well. She tried to say something to the driver, but then I, I think somebody in the backseat said, no, no, if you get out to throw up, she's not going to let you back in. Yeah, because like, like, then start you're, you're up, likely you're to throw up again. You don't let them back in the car. So, <sighs> uh, so she switched wow, seats, Luke. somehow managed. They, like, rotated. She went up. The other girl slid under. She went, like, you know what I mean? Because there were three people in two seats. So they managed to rotate. And then she got the window down and just yacked out the window for, like, a couple of minutes. Yo, that's way worse. I way way rather have somebody leave my car and yak. Knock on wood. I haven't thrown up from drinking in, like, eight years. I mean, the car was also pretty loud. And our driver probably was drinking, too, to be honest. Yeah, but you puke all over the side of the car, then. I'd be pissed if someone was puking out my window because I wouldn't That's be sure that they're thought. clearing. That's what we yeah. thought. And we we meant to, t- to tell our friend, hey, when you get home, you got to clean that vomit off your car. Yeah, fuck and that. Just, get out of my car and puke. And then I'll leave. And we just, we just never did. So we got dropped off. And it was like a couple of weeks later when I was like, hey, remember when you threw up outside the car? Because it's one of those brownout memories. She's like, oh, my God. That's right. She goes, we never cleaned it off. And I was, I was, oh, my gosh, you're right. And I called my friend and he's like, What? I was like, yeah, there's vomit on. He goes, no. I was like, well, then your parents found it and cleaned it up and didn't say anything. He's like, no, I, I took that car the next day. There's no vomit on it. So she was like, I was so blacked out. I forgot I did it, but somehow I didn't get any on the car. Oh, yeah. wait, you were throwing up? No, she no, was. She did. She oh. said, she said oh, She's okay. like, I managed, she managed to, like, she pulled it off perfectly. Oh, so she but was the so driver drunk. couldn't even tell she was puking out the window, which makes me think the driver had been drinking, too. But she was so if drunk. If the driver that that wanted to come pick up her daughter and seven people from a work party, the mom was probably drunk, too. Yeah. Yeah. How many people do you think are drunk on the roads at any given time? Uh, 10%. Uh, probably like 20%, I would say. <laughs> would, would you that agree that off. the percentage goes up not only... In, because the the total number of drivers goes down, like it, I'm saying, it goes up. Oh, yeah, at night does. because the total at number of drivers goes down, and the likelihood right. that you're the on the road goes for up. some kind yeah. of drinking activity is really high. The yeah, scary thing not, to me is if you're is not that, on a cop, if you're not a cop and you're not working and you're driving at what, what are you doing out? It's more than yeah, more than a fifty percent chance you're fucked. But that's, sure, right. some people are coming back from visiting grandma in the hospital, right. but a lot more <laughs> are going to the bar to have a drink with their friends. Some of them are reasonable and have one drink. It depends some of them on the area. Have seven and drive home. It depends on the road and the time of night too, because this is why like a lot of times on Saturday night you'll be driving home and you'll think how come there are no cops out and it's like well yeah they are out they're just sitting at certain areas where they know 
oh, this is the route home from that bar where they overserve or people just get sloppy, whatever the case is. And Main roads generally because it's usually because you don't make it to the back roads in time. That's where people get pulled over. They get pulled over on also. On it's big not roads a lot of. They times. know if they wait on the back roads, there's a chance they'll catch something. Sure, but they'll wait there for an hour before that happens. Yeah, and in that hour of waiting. Five potential drunk people passed on the main road. But also five potential drunk people crashed and fucked shit up. Because you didn't stop them. Right. So it's it's more sort of it, it's actually more moral in that sense to say like so okay, you, we'll Oh, wait also on the, the crashes roads. on the main roads tend to be more fatal because of speed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but Joe, you wait, also you get them moral? before they crash. That's the idea. <laughs> what? What's, it's more, what's moral more moral if the police if the job of the police is to make this the public more safe. Like in that you're, they're usually like at the entrances towards main roads, like, yeah. and and it kind of stops you before you might get on the highway and be going seventy five and kill kill two people instead it's of very, just crash into a tree. It's very rare you, that I see cops. If you like, hit a pole going thirty in a neighborhood, like yeah. you're, you're fucked, fucked up, your car the electric you, in that neighborhood probably fucked, walk but, away. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. If you hit right. if you hit a divider going seventy, you're gonna flip into a three sixty or whatever the fuck. You and now might it's kill a whole someone thing. else, too. and you're dead. Yeah. And probably uh, I, someone else. Yeah. But think about it. You guys live in an area with no mass transit, right? There's pretty much none. Uh, essentially, yeah. Essentially, there's a there's a very weak bus network people drive, that you can't People drive on. to the train stations by you. Like, it's not like... How do you get to the train commu- station? Unless you live within walking distance, yeah, you would have to drive. But yeah, you most need a people ride to the are, train are driving station. to them, Can right? you give but, me like, a ride to the train station? And almost every train station on Long Island has extreme parking problems. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. A lot of parts of the During, like, world you go to, right people hours. use the trains instead of cars, not to supplement their car. New York's well, just fucking weird. Well, the scary but, thing is if there were no trains, it would be even worse, which is scary. R- right. But yeah. So you guys live in an area with no mass transit. No, that's not true. But It's what we said already. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very limited. Pretty and you much can't an area with no It's mass designed, transit. the mass transit is, is weird because it's designed to get you to and from New York City. There's no north-south line for hundreds right. of miles. If you want to take a Not bus hundreds, from Babylon to, to if you if you Port combine Chabot, the trains and the buses transfer, though you can get you know? almost anywhere. Yeah, you. It just sucks. True. It, it might take all day. You might be anyways, better off walking. Anyways, so you guys go have like we've done it. You go to the bar and you watch people meet up at a bar on Long Island. Two people get there, then one other person shows up. Another person shows up. Everybody shows up in their own car. They put their keys down with their wallet on the bar, maybe when they get there and take their coat off, and then they all leave and get back in their cars and leave. Have you ever seen a bartender take someone's keys away? I've personally Long never. Island? Well, I saw it once. No, I haven't seen it but once. Right? How many of the rest of the time are those people okay to drive? Maybe okay to drive, but how how many of them were drunk? So yeah, but a lot like, of people you just think about how many bars are busy on Long Island and how few cabs. And Ubers actually go to bars. No, like there's the a lot of Ubers now. Of Uber's pretty big. I no. think Johnny, one Here one thing now. that Uber has created um, is is an energy where people recognize that it's way safer to plan ahead the fifteen dollar extra cost on the night. So now when you go out drinking, you know it's going to be like however many beers you have at five dollars a beer, and you know you and your friends are going to split the the fifteen dollar Uber right. back to your house. I think people right. are more willing to do that. So I think that the net drunk drivers on the road has gone down probably. I don't have any stats on that, but How about that would this, be though? my guess. I, I knew a bartender who made his own stencil, like a lift thing. He made his own lift sign and just put a light bulb behind it, like a purple. Like he made his own lift And just parked in front thing. of places? That's and probably just, so illegal. I mean, he puts it in his car and he just... It's he's for when not he's a driving. lift driver, though? No. Yeah, that's but, definitely illegal. Right, but he does it when he drives home from the bar late at night because people assume he's the Lyft driver on the road at 2 a.m., not that he just left. Oh, I see. He's by himself driving from a bar, or you don't know. You assume he's going to a bar. He must be picking someone up. You're saying generally a cop, when they see an Uber light or a Lyft light or both, they're they're going to assume you're not the drunk one on the road. You're, You're working. And if they pull you over and go like, "What's up?" You can be like, "Oh yeah, I just dropped someone off around the corner." And they're like, "Oh, so you're a Lyft driver? Can I see the app on your phone?" You can be like, "No, you're not allowed. You like, you can't search my phone. It's considered private property." Like, you can just be like, "No, I don't have to show you my phone. What's your problem? I didn't do anything." Yeah, like, you and know, then it's, you, so the problem with Face ID though is they can like make you look at the phone to open it. 
Who's they? they? Yeah, I know, but it's mounted in my thing because I'm a fake Lyft driver. I'm just saying, like a lot, uh, some of those, not a lot, but I, I think that's more common too than people realize is fake Uber and Lyft stickers for drunks to use when they come home from the bar. Wait, so these I haven't heard of that actually happening, but I've thought about Wait, it. But what as are, an I Uber a driver? Did it. What are these people actually doing? They're just like murdering people. No, oh, Joe no. stepped away. Oh, so uh, it's when just you're my coming, friend, I, I just wasn't paying attention. Like as a way to not get all. pulled over as a deterrent, you put on an Uber sign or a Lyft sign. And you're driving home, just you're not a real Lyft driver. Oh, so the cops are like, oh, he's probably good. He's probably working. Yeah, he's, like, he's, he's out here picking up. Oh, he probably swerved because he was hitting so accept on another both. ride. So it's not illegal, though. To do uh, probably. I'm you're not sure if it is or it isn't. It's probably illegal to put that sign up if you're not an employee of Lyft. I'm sure they could sue you. Is it illegal or is that just a civil matter of fraud? Maybe it's just a civil matter. Right. Yeah. They let Lyft come after. Like if I put a Kellogg sign on my car, is that illegal? (laughs) But couldn't a cop just hit you in the leg? I just put like Kellogg cereal on my car. Can I just yeah, paint right? that on there and drive angry. around and people will be like, wow, that must be the Kellogg's guy like going around. And the cop meetings. will be like, yeah, I'm going to pull him over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not saying that specifically is like a deterrent. It's for cops. definitely not a that? deterrent. Yeah. What if you had a bunch of like Coca-Cola stuff on one side of your car and then all flat earth stuff on the other side? <laughs> and you, you, and you went you viral and Coca-Cola <laughs> contacted you and was like, yeah, you got to take that down. We don't want to be associated. I like Geico's. It's just like Geico.com. Very like subtle on the on the each side of the car. Dude, try this. I don't want to. It's schnapps. Eh. Ooh, you know, schnapps is a, a very long Christmassy it's, it's German drink. schnapps. It's going to be a long from Germany. Schnapps. I said schnapps. I'm good. What kind of schnapps? Jerry, I insist. It's, it's from an Taste actual pie in Germany. But what kind of schnapps? What's it? What's the, the what flavor? What's the base sugar? Um, I thought it was pineapple. There's some weird looking fucking uh, dude with a pipe on it. It says, <laughs> Der Flutschicke Klerle mit dem all right, you went real Slavic at the end there, Joe. Well, it is German. Uh, it's, but I'm saying schnapps is usually made from a sugar, like peach schnapps is made from from peaches. Right? No, I'm saying it's literally in German, like because it's a like I I got but it. What from does it German. taste like? Like you can't order it. Like you have to go to Germany and get it. It tastes like uh kind of like it's awesome walnuts or almonds. Ooh, nice. yeah, it's really good. That's why I'm like, Luke, you cuck, try it. And you guys like, want to know what my... I don't know that brand. You guys want to you, know what you, my dad you know did for his holiday cards this year? You mean yes, I do. <laughs> so let's say he sent out about 10 or 15 holiday cards. He bought sounds like $15 right. of like $1 lotto tickets. That also sounds about right. Scratched all of them, <laughs> kept kept the winners, and put wait, all, wait, all wait. losers into the cards and said like, Merry Christmas, best of luck with the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just fuck you cards? Yeah. <laughs> Who did that? My dad. <laughs> oh my Luke, God. the more I like hear about your parents, the more you like finally make sense to me. Where where I just think, <laughs> okay, that that explains it. That's amazing. So these are cards that he sent to to friends and family. Friends and family, right? yeah. Okay. And he's he's known as just like a jokester, like I see. It's Wait, not like they'll actually be insulted. They'll be like, but that's classic, di- you know. But that's human- diabolical because that's like, oh, yeah, look, the jokester's going at it again. But if he had won five grand a week for life, he would have said, yeah, fuck that. I'm keeping that. Oh, there's no chance he would probably even do the prank because then it would be like, Wait. You just won the lotto. Was that like from this prank? <laughs> yeah. So what would happen? I'm pretty sure he hopefully would keep the money and then give me some and be like, fuck you, family. Five thousand a week for life. I'll wait a year for for the the savings no, to build up if that's what you is, want. Like, but he, fork me over some of that. It's fair enough. Five no, thousand a month th- for life on just a extra money a week. A week? Yeah. A week? No. It, yeah. No. Fuck this is that. why. Give me some down, in the first Luke. month. This is why if your parents trust you, it would be better <laughs> for you to cash it into your name because otherwise, whenever oh, they die, true, yeah. you stop collecting. Oh, right. so the four so he would give the ticket Whether to you. Sixty, and I would just 20. be like, "I swear, I'll send you money every now, month." Now, here, here's the thing. If <laughs> yeah, and then and then the deal though is when they and then I won't. when they die, you get to keep it. The rest of it. Like, here's it's the a thing. Good deal. If your dad made a deal with you, if that happened to your dad, and he said, "I'll tell you what, you cash the ticket." Should I confront them about that um, at and, Christmas this year? Totally. And yeah. in, no, he's my like, hey, if you ever get a winning lotto ticket, don't forget. The let deal is the, me cash it. In. The deal is here's the deal. He gets the winnings. For as long as he's alive, but then it transfers to you. Would you take that deal? And would you stand by it? Would I take the deal where I get a whole bunch of money? No, no, no. You don't get you don't get dick to start. It, it's yeah. he gets the he gets all the winnings until he dies, and then you can start collecting. Fine, like that's you're, just you're, p- money. What's gonna, the other option? You you don't get anything till he dies. Then I'll take I'll take. Wh- what's my two options? Your two options is 
is oh yeah that's true actually both yeah. options Joe, are just getting always, a lot of money you that's could true. always screw him <laughs> over and just no you could be, be like, like fuck you give me half now yeah, you could just say, no, no, we'll do it that way. Put it in my name, and I'll send the money over to you. And, and lie, when yeah. the money comes back, right. eh, I'm not going to say it. Yeah, that. and be like, meh, could do that. actually, I'm just going to take all of it, and I'll give you, Dad, I wouldn't do like, that. half. So you, like, how our, much money our, does a person our, need to be happy in this life? Probably more than you have. Um, I'm definitely below the threshold where they say <laughs> you will reach maximum happiness because you have no financial stress. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, that's my point. So They it, say that's about 75000 where above that, your happiness doesn't really increase with income. Yeah, it, it's like 75000 to, to 100 it. and whatever based on where you live and other that's factors. That's bullshit. Yeah. What? That's such bullshit. If I had millions I don't think of dollars, it's you know, it's I not at have, all. I don't think. I don't think it's I, bullshit. I, I'm I way have, happier than people I know that are way richer than me. But I, I'm just saying, like I, it, that's like a generalization, statistical bullshit. That thing. that because if that I is had millions true. of dollars, that is I would true. have thousands of percent more trebuchets than I have now. So like, Johnny, you wouldn't, no, you wouldn't. You catapult. would, but you know, guess what? The 997th trebuchet you wouldn't make you that much happier. No, he has zero percent trebuchets right now, which means he would, even if he increased that by a thousand percent, you're increasing a thousand percent of zero, which is still zero. Trebuchets. But the point is, Joe, I would have the money to do it. So I would be happier. I, I mean, that I agree with. Uh, but the- My point is that once you can pay all your debts off and you feel like you're living comfortably and taking the amount of vacations you, ha- you, you would want, doing meaningful work, and but like that's why that more than 75 yeah. has very little effect on happiness, whereas no. below 75, to go from like 20 to 50 yeah, that's is a, a big, big increase in but your well-being. But it also depends. If you, if you already you have eat healthier, kids, for, for example. example, that means that you need a lot more to make them comfortable, which makes you comfortable yeah, so in addition. It, it depends on factors. Right. I think that's yeah. that's for this like a single. Per- I think they even differentiate it and it's, based it's on if you have a family of five kids or like you're single, right? right? Like you're probably better off. No, th- this is probably true though because if you're a single per or whatever, right? You're you're thinking about this in the context of okay for one adult functioning person, right? And okay, a hundred grand a year or whatever, and that gives you the ability to take time off, travel. Do whatever moderately and keep in the moderation. bill collectors away. Guess what? You, you exactly, and you don't have enough money. Where well, it's cheaper if I just buy a property somewhere and like pay other people to manage it and then use it however many weeks out of the year I want. But now that's a headache. Now that's a responsibility. Now that's a burden that you have exactly in running and managing that. As opposed to yeah, I have a little extra money. I'm going to go to uh you know Jamaica for a couple of weeks this like February and chill there. Right? Like this was Alan Watts' advice on life. Um, he said this, this little video that was put together, um, a part of his lecture was about like, slow down in life. Don't, don't move so fast. And he said a friend of his who was really busy was like, I think since I have a helicopter's license, I might buy a helicopter and I'll be able to like make all these meetings (laughs) that I can't make. And he's like, don't do that because now people will expect you to be the guy who can like live in Houston yet have a meeting in fucking, you know. It sounds cool. Oklahoma City within sounds, the hour yeah, or some it sounds shit. Cool it's like you're paper. not going to be happy. It sounds cool on paper when you say it, but yeah. then actually living it and having that be your reality, eh, maybe not so much, right? Yeah. Because now that's a, that that's becomes not a burden. necessarily true. Yeah. Because what if like, freedom freedoms create if more responsibilities car, and so burdens? I, what? I'm saying, like, as you become more like free with your wealth, you either realize that it, it's not making much of a difference like if you get a ten thousand dollar raise when you're making six figures it's not as big a difference right. as if you're making twenty thousand and but like like it just doesn't keep getting the serotonin levels to 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 jerk you off with happiness but see that it, it's just you're these are idiots who are doing it that's wrong. beautiful because <laughs> like the guy's talking about the helicopter it's like, well, what if I have a car to take to my drive to my office in town, right? I have a nice house. I dri- you know what? I'm going to get rid of my car and get a horse because I l- love riding my horse. And it's just great. And it's more expensive than a car to maintain a horse. But like, I get to ride a horse through the field on my way to work. It's every culturally day. expected that you would have a car if you're like a real estate agent. You're setting but, like but, times but and meetings uh, with I'm people. But I'm just saying like, is the money gives you the, gives you the <laughs> option to live how you want. And if he's like, well, but I want to fly a helicopter every day, but I have to make right. these meetings. What what I'm saying is it, it gives you the um, freedom to live how you want. But once you start making money past achieving that freedom, you right. have less and less returns in terms of money to happiness. 
And it turns out that like yeah. one of the keys to happiness is just slowing down in life and taking in more data and slowing down time instead of giving yourself more shit to do and speeding up time as you like check off items on a to-do list. And a great time to slow down is it's like the holiday season. A sleepy Sunday on the holiday season where you're going <laughs> to go to a great holiday, holiday party. work party, really? which is what we're talking no, about I for think, this episode. I think that that actually segues really nicely into what I think of as my favorite part of the holiday season. And we were sitting, we we grabbed like a, 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 a Southwest chicken wrap from like this place in town. And we were just observing people. And my fiance made the comment, man, it's so crazy here. Like she's from Turkey. So she's only been here for a few years. And she was like, it's so crazy how in the month of December, people are just nicer here. And they just like have lighter spirits and like, I was Why like, can't they do that all year? I was like, yeah. yeah, it's almost like we're living in Seattle temporarily, even though it's New York. And it would be so much better. It would be so chill. People are smiling at their kids. Like, they're like, hey, has it? Oh, let me hold it. Like, everybody's just in a more of a cheerful mood. And I don't know. My theory about it is that something from like the little kid feeling of Christmas sticks with you, even as an adult. There's something magical about the season. <laughs> And then also the fact that Christmas and New Year's like are back to back. So like the week in between Christmas and New Year's, even if you have to go back to work, it has a sort of like a fucking yeah, energy. For sure, yeah. You don't care what you eat. You don't care like if you're drinking every night. Like it's just kind of a, fu <laughs> a fuck it kind of time period yeah. for people. And they appreciate their kids. They, they're sitting in a room with a nice Christmas tree with white lights. And you're just kind of drinking some like spiced rum eggnog. And you're like, man. Yo, I had some can't believe we made it another day. year. Yeah. You know, we I, have two kids that we didn't murder. A pretty decent dog. Yo, I was totally wrong on eggnog. I thought it was awful, and then I added a oh, lot. Oh, I'm gonna of, buy some. I added a ton of Maker's Mark to it, and it was. Is fantastic. it? Do you recommend that? I was yeah. wondering oh. if I should go the rum route or the yeah, bourbon so route. I researched this hard, and Maker's. I mean, rum might work pretty well, but the Maker's was really solid okay you could put a lot in i figured that would be good because i generally yeah, would smooth. drink makers and like i don't yeah. know how i would drink rum other than in eggnog i think, or I think whiskey's like whiskey sure. is the th is the spirit to mix with dairy yeah i agree yeah, yeah i'm it's, sold after the the, the makers, you know, like bailey's eggnog. like you know you okay imagine making a bailey's with tequila too sure. sweet yeah too you know? sweet yeah all right Even i'll do i'll rum. do makers then. yeah makers is good that, yeah. it can't hurt to have makers sitting around the house also they sell something in all the supermarkets here they have something in all the supermarkets here I'm going to get and try on Christmas called a hot butter rum mix. Oh, I've and heard of that. it's this like yeah. brown sugar spice. I've had that. Blob. It's really good, yeah. Is it good? I was thinking it's, about getting it. It's really it. good, you like, yeah. You like it's really simmer sweet. The, the, the rum and you add it, right? Yeah, it's really sweet though because, I mean, rum by its nature is really sweet anyways. And then like Why hot, would you add sugar? Like butter, cinnamon, sugar. It gets really sweet. But it's delicious. Like you'll, you'll like mm. it. You'll definitely like it. Oh. Yeah, but I, I think what you were saying too, Luke, is part of that Christmas cycle. Is it's especially in the north, it's the seasonal. Like the summers are great in, in the northeast, sure. And then autumn, you know, you start losing sunlight, and then they fuck up the the time with daylight savings. And then by Christmas season, you you, you want an excuse to go get a drink or go meet up with people, or because you're not going outside, you're not seeing green stuff, you're not running into as many. Yeah, people there, there's there's a more like commun community like feeling like yeah. I should connect with the community before this crazy time called winter happens, where like half yeah. of us are going to die. Um, from well, disease, so from the anymore. cold, like just affecting like your ability to get sick. Are you done? From the lack of food. Um, Are you done? I'm just saying, like, there's probably a reason that this is Lucas built Krampus deep into our psychology. Yeah, that's true. It is an uplifting type of sort of celebration. And you got to believe in magic time, a little bit. Given the time, yeah, because we might not make it till March when shit starts growing again. Because stuff's going to be frozen, definitely now. How do you even know it won't be January, a ten-year February. winter like in Game of Thrones? That's you true. don't really There's know. There's no science. You just There's, assume science has only existed have... for twenty years for most of history at best. If, the, history, if there was a there headline no tomorrow science. that says the sun turned out to be fake, I'd be like, ah, shit. Ah, I wouldn't. Be like, I thought I had physics down, and then yeah. this headline <laughs> happened. You know but what are you gonna do? Isn't that why you have like a big game bird or something on Christmas? Is because they're all going to leave for the season, so you murder one and eat it before. Or you most run out of them of die. Yeah, it's like it's or, like most. Or like I know in Scandinavia they used to like the winters were so harsh they and long they would go into it being like how many cows do we have? Oh seven. How many do we need next year? Oh we need two. All right, so let's save three and just kill the other four. <laughs> 
<laughs> because we're not going to feed yeah. these things all winter. Like it was a common thing. You just you killed off the stock older up on livestock. calories. Yeah, kill and, kill and, as many birds as you can eat. Well, the birds right. also aren't going to live eat, yeah. through the winter because you don't want to have to feed the birds. You and you, you have, can't eat you don't dead have bird food. meat. That shit goes bad fast. Well, you also don't want to eat a bird that starved to death. That's not very good yeah. meat, right? Yeah. Like you want to you want to fatten up the bird, fat slaughter bird. the shit out of it around Christmas. If, if you and then slaughter eat, like, a bunch grubs. of animals on Christmas, yeah, that's think about all the feed you would have given them throughout the winter. You can give to your other animals. So when it's March and there's still like things are just starting to come out of the ground, you're like, let's kill one of those nice fat cows that have just been laying in hay and eating all winter. It's nice and tender. Mm. Mm. It's mm. also um, mm. <laughs> roast beast. Well, Joe, what's your favorite part <laughs> of, yeah. of the holiday season? Uh, honestly, <laughs> that's actually a really fun question because don't, I mean, don't you feel like it's changed over time? Because I feel I feel as if when I mean, I, 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 I was a kid and then I was right. a teenager. And now, now, I'm an now you're adult. soulless. Yeah, I understand <laughs> that. Um, no, I am. I'm soulless, but I'm more soulful during the Christmas season. I'm amazed you were able to say soulful. Like you, you almost couldn't do it. I know how to slow down my speech when I'm saying a difficult <laughs> word. I, I, I also know when Luke's drank enough, where drunk enough, where whatever. Drank. Uh, yeah, he might not be able to say that word. As like if I wanted it. to say the word about conscious experience, like I was speaking you phenomenologically. Barely, you barely said experience there. <laughs> I uh, tried to say that word phenomenologically the other yeah. day, and then I realized I couldn't say it. So then I just practiced it like ten times in a row. I was like, "Phenomena, you're so phenomenologically, weird. <laughs> phenomenologically, phenomenologically." My point and now I can say it. My, it was like learning Turkish, but I was learning English. My point is that uh, sorry, uh, what was your favorite part of the holiday season? <laughs> your dementia to start, and then after I can't that, wait till I have dementia. The podcast is going to get so good. You're you're, you're going <laughs> to ease in so well, um, but. So when you're a kid, right, and anybody who has grown up celebrating Christmas can probably really identify with this, I feel, if they're being honest. Uh, there's something not necessarily <laughs> superficial about it, but there's something very surface level about it where you're you're just kind of in the you're ensconced in the, the kind of orgy <laughs> of gifts, right? Yeah, velvet <laughs> gifts, right? Where it's it's about as a that. kid. Yeah. It's about the it's a little selfish. It's very selfish. And so here's the thing, when I get But there's a cheerfulness to it as a kid. It's not completely well, there's selfish. An innocent, there's an innocence. I think to there's it. an yes. appreciation whether you know it or not as yes. a kid that the adults around you are in good moods. Yes. And so especially I, if they're usually in but bad moods. But here's my point. I feel like that's a, sort of an innocence but like a, a genuine innocence that you actually get back or you can get back as you get older. And yeah, that's I, sort of yeah. how I feel now because the gifts I got for people this year, they're really good gifts for two reasons. One, because I only got gifts for people I actually care about, and two, I have no shame to not get a gift for someone. Yep, there are people who I know pretty well; they're not getting a gift. I know you guys really well. I just don't have enough mental energy to get you gifts, dude. Are you serious? Actually, I totally got you an awesome gift. Really? Are you serious? I don't know. Oh, what the fuck! All right, I quit the cast. <laughs> it's over. I'm moving. I didn't. I didn't get you guys anything. I got you guys. I got all of you everything. Oh my god. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, really. I didn't. I didn't get anybody. Anything. Um, but we should do a thunk tank secret Santa. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a really good idea. Hey Johnny, who'd you get? Uh, I Joe. Actually, wait, I actually, I, I got, I, I did get Johnny and Luke things, but. I I have to. I've got so many things I can regift at home, so don't worry. No, that's why it's funny because they were things I got in bulk. Like <laughs> yeah. there were things I got from getting other things, but but my point being that they are things that I know you guys will appreciate. So that's my point. Is that all right? Well, I just need to tell everybody listening because they don't know how Joe's game here. Joe for like three straight years gave me Goya beans, like yeah. Goya brand beans, beans are great. As a kid. You can eat like, those. That's a, like, oh, that's a healthy gift. I know it's something gift. that you'll really enjoy, and it'll be the jar of peanut butter from our pantry that's like still closed or sealed, but I'll be like, oh, thanks. He'll be like, yeah, you love peanut no, butter. No, that was when I was like 14 and didn't have disposable income to go out and buy actual gifts. But you so did I still it for, gave for you years. Something. What? You did that for years. You did I'll that say this on the cast. So, like, for example, me and my brothers usually agree no gifts. And you still have to get a gift. It's though. not uncommon if you agree to get with somebody to not get a gift. You have to get that fucker. So last year Come we on, agreed man. that. And I was just like, OK, yeah, you know how you and I Luke not, not got any gifts. And then <laughs> you know like my brother got got 
not well, one of my brothers got me like something. It was the Kurt Vonnegut coffee mug with the quotes on it. That's a good gift. Really good gift, right? So but I was like, a, it was probably only but eight wait, bucks, but, but it was still like but that's a nice a, thought. That's a thoughtful gift. That's yes. not if he had gotten you a thirty dollar gift card to Best Buy, fuck him. Because you agreed no gifts, right? right? That's so, bullshit. We, but if he gets you a gift where it's like, yeah, Luke's gonna love this, Luke's gonna actually use this, or he specifically would want this or need this. I like I don't feel bad if somebody gets me a gift or I get somebody. That's a, a more gift genuine gift. And they don't like even if I got somebody a gift that's slothful, like I got Tommy the perfect gift for Tommy. And I expect nothing from him, nor do I want a gift from him. So Tommy's my brother, if you're listening for the first time somehow. Um <laughs> But Welcome. I got I got him a gift that <laughs> is only so Johnny th- tell me this is not the perfect gift for Tommy I got and nobody's going to get this reference unless you're really weird it's a coffee mug and it has a, a an Age of Empires 2 monk on it like pixelated monk and it says Wululu on it it's amazing amazing Wooloo. gift right isn't that isn't that <clears> so <throat> much better than like a $50 Best Buy gift card yeah so what's he going to get for $50 he's going to spend 50 more there's... There's two kinds of good gifts. Something that like you know the person is definitely going to use and they need. Yeah. Or like you know they're a Starbucks person and you give them like a fifty dollar Starbucks gift card. Oh, I'm totally getting a Starbucks Amazon. gift card at this point. So it's like the oh they go there every morning. You just bought them like you right. know, two weeks of free Starbucks. Like, yeah, that's that's really a, that's, cool. a, that's a decent gift too. That's just like but, thoughtful but, in like a practical or, way. Yeah. Or it's something so useless that the person would love and pointless. But they love it in such a way that they would never justify getting it for themselves. Like I bet that was like right. a fifteen dollar mug, and you can get I get my mugs for fifty cents at the thrift store. Right, you know, right, right. Like, you, like, but that's pay my point. That yeah, for a mug. Yeah, it's not you would like never do it for yourself. But if someone got it for you, you're like, oh my gosh, I love. Well, that's thing. my point though. Like the 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 mug that I just described. So I, I should explain that a little bit more because if you haven't played the video game Age of Empires, it doesn't really make sense. But that's oh, like no. a, a a one of the characters that you can use. And one of the things that they do when, when these monks like convert people, they go, Woo-loo-loo. <laughs> and so it's funny because we always say it to each other in like when we're chatting where it's like, oh, what's going on? And when it, it either like, oh, wake up and do stuff like get moving, we'll say like, Woo-loo-loo. so it's funny because that's a perfect thing then to put on a coffee mug. So he's going to get that gift and, and think this is way better than whereas if you most... got that for me i'd be like i don't get it and yeah. i already have Thanks enough coffee mugs you would be yeah. like joe what free shit did you get this from yeah fuck you right yeah. so that's tommy point. knows you yeah. probably found it somewhere yeah and, or custom made it, it. Yeah, yeah exactly so that's that's what i feel it, it, so to me that's how christmas has changed right over time where i think about it in the sense that honestly if there's something that i think somebody can really use i might just you know, get it eventually for them or wait for their birthday. But I like Christmas because it's a benchmark to say, wait a minute, I can wait for that and and then use that to be like, okay, here's an actual genuine gift for that person that they're really going to, like he's going to get utility out of that. He's going to actually use that coffee mug, but he's going to appreciate it way more than any other coffee mug he would get from anybody else because it has actual sort of like a, a personal connection to it, right? I appreciate mm-hmm. the the no gift arrangement with people and then you only still give a gift if you find something like that that you're like, oh yes. my God, I have to get this. So, and yes, so I agree with that and I found it pretty easily, honestly. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and I thought, because I wasn't going to get him anything because we agreed on this and we pretty much do this where we don't get I gifts. I should change the agreement. But... Let's just say no gifts unless it like... That's a fair addendum. I no am down gifts with that. unless yeah. dot dot dot. Yeah. Just call it that. Exactly. N- like no if gifts you have any you. unless, yeah. like don't not get a gift. It feels good to give a gift. So give a gift. It's good for both parties. But but don't you feel like if you really yeah. care about somebody? Because honestly, I, so I got gifts for lots of people who I very honestly don't expect nor even want a gift back from. Right. And I feel as if that's a really good sign of a really healthy relationship. Johnny, right? with your wife, do you have a no gift or a gift policy? Or is there a policy uh, at all? Is there an assumed gift? Is it? Yeah, he's married. We kind of do a mixture. Uh, we kind of rip off what her parents do is for their birthdays and holidays, they buy each other gifts for themselves. Like that's <laughs> when they like, hey, like her dad. Wait, will be like, I bought what? It. What? Awesome. what? 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 That's such it's, a good, it's idea. Such a good mathematical like, idea. Hey, but I bought tell that me. new tractor. I bought that new piece for the tractor you wanted, and she'll be like, oh, thank you. Like I bought. 
you know, you know. Wait, but but on on his birthday for you on his birthday, what? does he tell her what he wants, and then she like how does that work? Like no, no, he, no. He just gives has the excuse to buy it. Because he just it's his buys birthday? what he wants, like a treat for himself on his birthday. Oh, really? Thanks. Does she have it. to say this is what I would be willing to spend on your birthday, or does he just assume? I mean, I don't know. I don't. Talk to, I don't know their financial discussions. I'm not. See, I feel like. But marriage. you're just saying he I decides on a gift on like his birthday that he thing. normally wouldn't buy on any other day. But she also has gotten, like, she got uh, herself. He got her like socks or something one year. But got her, she bought them for herself because she just needed socks. Like, okay, they. It's just so that like you you could say that there's a gift, uh, but. So we kind of do that, but we tend to we usually buy each other something during the holiday season. But not on Christmas. I don't right. believe in giving gifts on Christmas, really, unless you're going to a party. Um, obviously, so you just give them around the holiday. I might do time. a few like, of those just, to, silly just sweater, for the Christmas um, sweater that like it's like an ugly sweater kind of sweater. If it's warm, but though? it's got bells. It's got bells all over it, and oh, it, beautiful. it applies to her job. So it's it's really like she wore it to the company party, and they all and it's, loved it's it like already. badass and like goofy and nerdy. Yeah, yeah, it was great. She lo- they loved it so. Can't go wrong um, and, with like an ugly sweater or whatever kind of sweater on Christmas. Definitely not. Yeah. And she got me socks of like some knight on a horse, like some guy jousting. It says like Hark Thief. But guess the what? You always something. you always need socks and you like And it's like jousting. Yeah, I could use socks. But we, we so we on Christmas Eve I buy her uh a hundred dollars worth of sushi that we eat together, <laughs> and then on Christmas she takes me to see Star uh, Wars. A Star Wars movie. <laughs> Because we want to eat sushi and go to Star Wars, so we just pretend it's a gift to each other. But that's not that's bad. Really something that's we just cool. That's want. a good policy. I yeah. also, I also like the idea of having your own thing. Like that's a oh, thing. So that our tradition is do. Christmas Eve. That's we, cool. uh, we get sushi, like a hundred dollars worth of sushi, and we watch Star Trek because we, we do Star Wars on Christmas, and we usually watch <laughs> some old Star Trek. That's awesome. And hang out, and then on Christmas Day we make beer. Uh, we go get Chinese takeout or Chinese buffet usually and get uh, wasted there. And then we so go good. see Star Wars because every year for the last four years, a Star Wars has come out on Christmas. Wait, have you, seen so the, have you seen the new one? No, we're going out. We bought our tickets. We're going on Christmas. We're going to oh, yeah, wake up, true. make beer. I'm going to try to sneak a quick lasagna in because our family <laughs> grew up sex, making lasagna. Sex move? So I think no, I can. It's, just, it's actually lasagna. I can guarantee it, Luke. <laughs> I think <laughs> I can. Johnny. Oh, yeah. No, it's real. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna slip <laughs> yeah, out see, a real told lasagna. You. Yeah, the growing l- up with Johnny, I'm like, no, he definitely means real lasagna. The lasagna as a sex move doesn't even sound appealing. It sounds just kind of like... Too many layers. Too hot and gross. Yeah, yeah too many steamy layers. You need way more people than it's appropriate on Christmas. So people have their own families and events, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to make some lasagna, and then we're going to go get drunk and see a Star Wars movie. But awesome. we do that every Fuck year, yeah. and we're slowly adding things to our tradition. Like, we actually got a menorah this year. Oh, yeah, Car- shit. She's Jewish. Uh, Jewish. <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> for... Jewish. My, Jewish. My sister-in-law is Jewish. Jewish. Yeah, so we're going to do the... We're gonna, tonight's actually... We're recording this on the first night of Hanukkah. Hanukkah. <laughs> Of 2019. Hanukkah. Is it so, Hanukkah or Chanukah? What is what is her take on it? Hanukkah. Hanukkah. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, it's I don't, I, I'm I, I'm asking. I'm trying to be appropriate. But so so tonight's the first. So we have a menorah. So we got a little tree like this big. I got like a, a foot and a half tree, and we're gonna hang stuff on it. You should get a tree and, nice. and put a menorah on. We top. put up a tree too. It, it seems silly, and we're the type of people that would normally be like, no. it's just a stupid thing to do. You got to put it up and but take it down. But it's fun. But there, our tradition th- that, of brewing beer on yeah. Christmas started because is your wife Muslim too? Because She's everything's my wife closed yet. on. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a weird thing to say. <laughs> it's true though. I haven't technically married her. <laughs> You're like I reserve the right. <laughs> yeah, and um, Jesus. <laughs> Technically, according to her ID, she's Muslim, but uh, yeah. that's so many people in Turkey who are actually just secular and not religious at yeah. all. It's kind of like the default that they put you into when they make your ID. Well, next year, next year instead of a Merry Christmas, you're going to have a solemn Ramadan. <laughs> I'd be happy to. There's a lot of beautiful things about that holiday. Um, sure. But I mean, like, it, do, do people are people less friendly during Ramadan? Because I feel like the hanger. Uh, levels rise. The hanger levels like rise so high, and they yeah, can't but, drink water either. So, like, see, that's the weird thing. The but, just general out of mindness. The food, I, the too. food I get, mm. but, but the water is kind of. But that's a intense. that's a religious tradition that 
that that dates That's back. True, yeah. Like Jesus went to the desert and was starving and thirsty, and like it was there that he was tempted by the devil at his weakest state, and he chose not to. Right? Yeah. It there there's a kind of like a tradition of like when you're in the present, yeah. you almost have like a psychedelic trip. You know? That's so funny that yeah, but that, isn't doing cocaine and going to a strip club and not like. Yeah, as our the girls for it's extra, the other direction the of spiritual. Like, yeah, as our as yeah. our fearless l- leader would say, same thing, same thing. Yeah, yeah. So I have a no gift policy with with my brothers generally. Yeah, and my brother texted me this year and said like gifts question mark, and I was like, oh, you got to get a gift. Fuck that. It guy. means he found something. That he means he found yeah, something, right? Yeah, maybe, yeah, and he doesn't want to feel a like a, a dick or something. Or yeah. maybe it means he didn't find something and he was genuinely curious. And I said, what do you mean, question mark? He goes, are we giving them or just, nah, fuck that? I feel, I feel. And I was like, well, it depends. Like, I'm down to do no gifts, now, but right? let me remind you that I gave you nothing last year and you gave me two things. Is that what you said? Yeah. Something uh, like that. What did he this, say? This, this He's like, I don't remember who... it that way. <laughs> <laughs> is... I love this how your siblings are as big engaged, of an though? asshole as you are. It's amazing. <laughs> Luke, this is the brother who just got engaged. Um, he's getting married. He got engaged about a year ago. Yeah. Okay. So this this is they're starting to do things like as a couple, and oh. she's, she she was organizing and like putting the Christmas yeah. cards and the couple stuff out together. This is definitely ticking what off we're the going there for boxes, Christmas too. things probably. I was like, what are we getting your parents? Like, what are we doing? Like, you know, what are we getting your brother? Probably, what do you mean you don't? What are we getting anything. your brother? Well, like, uh, we don't have to get anything. What do you mean you? Don't, are you sure? Did he say that? Find out. Yeah. Okay. He's I, been I, think, I think it, pro- it may that's a very new that. like, institutionalized. Like last year, what? he he got me that like. <laughs> Kurt Vonnegut mug, and and then she got That's Yanka a nice like a, a a candle or something. Oh um, yeah, they're gonna get you something. But like yeah, they're so, getting you. Something. So I got from a student um, up the ante. Don't regift. God damn it. A gift idea that <laughs> that gave me the idea to buy the same he, gift for he, someone else. The <laughs> audible to gift idea. That was good. That was good. I gave you was credit good for that. Save. That was good. Let me put it this way. <laughs> Every time we've hung out at their house oh, or at someone else's house, she gets up at like really early hour and goes out and g- finds a Dunkin' Donuts and gets the same coffee drink every morning. Who does? My future sister in law, my brother's. Oh, fiance. good. I was. Uh, I thought it was your your uh, future wife. I was like, Ugh. no, no, no. Um. So we we've always we've talked about it like a lot because like y- y- it's always like oh like. You were already up this morning and got a, a, a Dunkin' Donuts, and she's like, "Yeah, yeah, I was up an hour ago and like drove seven minutes to this Dunkin' Donuts." I'm like, "Damn!" So I want to like give a Dunkin' Donuts gift card, and then in the card, I kind of just thought of this as I was in that like snoozing my alarm period this morning, where I'm like half asleep, half awake. I was like, "Oh, I'll just write like a poem that says like." You know, twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Then. Early in the yeah, morning, keep going. Keep Kenna going. awoke. She went to her car. <laughs> Wait, I, and fuck. took a toke. <laughs> <laughs> Upon later arriving, <laughs> and without contriving, <laughs> she went to a Dunkin' Donuts and got a coffee. <laughs> no, I had a rhyming version this morning. Wait, I forgot it. <laughs> so that's not what you wrote. <laughs> no, I'm gonna write the rhyming version. Oh, you ever wrote anything? Help me, help me write it right now. On we air. just did. No, it, just it has happened. to rhyme. It did. Um. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Driving slowly over speed humps. Then early <laughs> in the morning. Careful while taking cocaine bumps. <laughs> <laughs> then sure. early in the morning oh, when Kenna awoke. The coffee shop. <laughs> she. Uh, wait. wait. <laughs> not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. But Kenna was awake and went to the car because a Dunkin' Donuts was not very far. That's, That's it? That's pretty good. That's not bad. <laughs> It's very bad. It's not good at all. <laughs> the funny part it's was like two lines. When when our alarms kept snoozing for like the sixth time in a row, we finally woke <laughs> up, and I said to my fiance, who's from Turkey, so she doesn't know this poem, this like story. Right? Twas the night before Christmas, poem? and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. That that story. Yeah. Um. Nor why would she? So I was like, oh, I thought of a pretty like it just came to my head like we could give Kenna this gift card to Dunkin' Donuts and and write this poem. And she was like, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. like, oh, it, yeah, you wouldn't. Poems are a, a weird Victorian Christmas thing we still do. <laughs> twas the reason, night man. before. She's like, what does twas mean? I'm like, <laughs> no, oh, what, why? <laughs> yeah, English are so weird to somebody who had to learn it in their 20s. That I must be like, why is twas? What makes December twas season? Like, <laughs> yeah. What? 
Because like, well, now you, there's even you have seasonal rules with your language too. Yeah. Now, like what the fuck, yeah. Guys? She could conceivably like actually ask, why is your language so fucked? Yeah, that, like why aren't we using twas if it makes sense? And it's like, well, it's yeah. only for Christmas poems now. Oh, when was oh, your yeah, what the fuck? That's how language bomb. should work. What's a tannin bomb? Oh, it's the Christmas tree. <laughs> what? So, oh, like, when Douglas was your frat Fur, party? It's dude. One of those? No, oh, it was on Saturday. Song. What? Tw- it was on Saturday. Twas the party before frat and all. <laughs> twas the, yeah, twas the Tannenbaum Eve. Yeah. We don't use Eve for anything else either. Nobody says on the <coughs> eve of battle. Anymore. Can you agree though? If Same you have a, before that, exactly. Yeah. Can you agree that if if you have a no gift agreement though, like if I were to buy them like a five hundred dollar like subwoofer for their like home entertainment system. That'd be like a, be a weird. Dick. Yeah, that'd be weird. Right? That'd be a bit much. Yeah. But if you buy them like That'd be uh, overkill. You know, like you know a what twenty five dollar great... Bluetooth speaker, that's not crazy. I want one of those you know um, what's a great demoisturizers that you put in the bathroom, like just those those things that you you know what I'm talking about, Johnny. Yeah, just go on Amazon and send it to Joe by Christmas. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, I was gonna say one of the the great Christmas. <laughs> Johnny's ideas. like he yeah. laughed like there's no chance that's happening. That's funny. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. A moisturizer. <laughs> what are you gonna search? A I, I started leading it to Johnny it's to talk a shower to him head, too. Right? Like you have one. Um, no, the, one, the great gift idea that I saw is the is those monthly club gifts, like a jelly of the month club, like a new baseball or, bat uh, each month. Oh, but that's probably expensive. <laughs> like Wait, you can do them for everything. Kelly Kara gets a ca- uh, uh, tea of the month club, so she gets these like small pouches of these organic fancy teas. Oh, I'm really and into you, that. Yeah, like I think it's a good to way. Try, like by the end of the, this whole shit. thing, yeah. we'll have had thirty that's cool, different yeah. teas. I used like to do that with wine. Um, Wait, you got me tea? No, I didn't get you anything. Don't <laughs> there are a lot of good anything. online wine other. clubs where you can do that. Got you, dick. You just get to sample things that you wouldn't otherwise like find the time to explore. When we were doing, you know what I got you, Joe? I got you tickets to a Star Trek uh, musical improv show. Oh, you told me about that, yeah. Portland, yeah. I'll take you to that. Yeah. What do you guys think about getting gifts as donations in people's name? uh, As I think it's mostly a piece of shit move. Really? What about people who just donate the money and don't put it in my? What about people who say on their birthdays they do those Facebook fundraiser things now? I think that's also a bit of a piece of shit move. You're trying to make me think that you're morally. I disagree. I, I think it's a great Facebook idea. Facebook takes it's, most of it, that money. No, no, no. But I agree with with it in theory. I know, but yeah, to say, if, hey, if, I'd if you really you cared it about it, crap, I don't need. If you really cared about it on the level of like how much money is the charity getting, then you would very easily be able to find out that Facebook takes too much overhead. From how much that. do they take? I think it's a majority. I don't think that's true. I read. Yeah, but nobody's going somewhere to your that Luke's like approaching like half. Com site. They're on Facebook, so. It, any money the charity is getting is way more than they would have gotten, right? Even if Facebook, is especially a as cut. opposed to the because material bullshit, because going to your blog yeah. spot for your no, that's to, what I mean. Because money off th- for your birthday, but I think it's also a, like they're on Facebook. It 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 is it it although a nice gesture and maybe there's some genuine vibes behind it. It's a subtle way to say like, hey, look, I'm signaling to the group that I'm not the kind of person that's selfish. <laughs> yeah, but I it it feels like something that I would do. Because I'm a little too cynical. I think you are because no, honestly, uh, it's not something I've ever done personally. But I do feel all right. Beach cleaner, <laughs> no, but that's my but that's my point, right? I don't beach clean for for any other the reason. glory, the glory, <laughs> the recognition. Joe's waiting for the Honor. recognition. Um, Yo, Johnny, we have to have like a beach cleaners <laughs> award ceremony, and then <laughs> not invite me. And I get it. And I get the award. You give it give to me, me the top award. Awareness. Yeah, give, give Luke... Joe like second place. Yeah, give give Joe bronze medal. You get second place bronze medal, Joe. Uh, but my point being that uh, no, seriously, if, if like all sort of arbitrary sort of whatever signal, because you're right, I do feel as if I sometimes see that, and I get the sense that oh, this person realizes right that the happiness they would get out of the material bullshit that they would get from normal gifts, they they actually are at least subconsciously cognizant of the fact that that is less sort of beneficial to them than the, whatever, virtue, like the signaling pride of, oh, Both, look, both are there, and that's fine. We, well, we all have, like, so we're keeping an eye ba- on where we a, are. But there's a balance, and it's our, our different reputation. degrees of balance for different people, right? I and think so for you the like best to think case, that, it's yes. mostly genuine. Right. 
And for the yes. worst case, it's like a little bit of genuine. Yes. I want to help people and mostly like yes. signaling to the group like, oh, yes. look, I, I want to look good in front of and people. So that's my, prestige. that's my point. That's how I feel. If I did that, it would be like, I don't know, 2080. Like 20% of it would, might be for me honestly saying, oh, look. As I get older and notice be, it, it gets it gets lower, though. No, that's what I mean. I start caring less but, about it. But I like, would like to think that that 20% is more along the lines of, oh, other people should maybe consider this. I, I don't like the idea of telling people what they should or shouldn't do. But I do like the idea of saying, yeah, maybe you don't need just nonsense. Right. Like nonsense gifts just so so you have a gift, right? Well, instead, have somebody put that yes, money towards yes. something good. Something I hate useful. nonsense gifts. Yeah, but that's well, my that's, point. That's why I'm. I I didn't, I didn't get anybody anything, but that's why I like. <laughs> You've said that like the nine idea. Times, if dude. I was gonna get anybody something, it would be those. <laughs> monthly he's just like, let me just club. frame this conversation by making In, it clear, lest you forget. I didn't choose to get anyone anything Nothing, so. ever. <laughs> no. I literally bought a sweater for my wife that she needed. One my wife. That's all I've got. I love uh, getting a gift for someone though, like when it really strikes me as like something genuine. And that's I what I like it. about it. E and even it's if it's a that little is bit selfish, like I really love it, but then I realize like it's because like when you really want to do something nice for someone. Yeah. So it, I, I'm thinking about this yeah. from a Costanza point of view. Is like uh -oh. a jelly of the month club is great because <laughs> like let's say you know this person eats toast with jelly, like that's their breakfast, right? They buy do I? regular grape Smuckers jelly. <laughs> Do you guys not know Jelly of the Month Club? It's a it's a reference to uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, really? The whole movie, know, he, th he thinks he's getting this big Christmas bonus. He buys the swimming pool before he gets the check, and the letter comes in the mail, and it's a Jelly of the Month Club from his oh, company. Oh, that's the worst gift it's ever. Not. Go fuck yourself. No one ever get me Jelly of the Month. No, I want Jelly. But but the point is, you get it for someone, and they go, okay, now they get a year of trying all these different jellies that they would never buy for themselves. So I'm sure some they're not going to like, but some they might genuinely like. They might go, you know, I didn't realize I like black currant jelly, and now I wouldn't have bought it current for myself, but now that I know I like it, I huh. might buy one. And it's also good in the signaling thing because they get it every month. So by November right. of next year, <laughs> Clever or by August of next year, they're like, they, they're like oh, I'm going to stop getting these eventually. I got so used to just jelly showing up all the time. <laughs> and you, you, But then also you're like, every time they come, so, you, so in August, no, you but go, monthly gifts oh, are Joe good. got me that jelly. Joe got me all this jelly from last year. I should get really get him something this oh, year. Oh, I didn't get you and jelly. And then no, September, you go, wow, more jelly. I got to remember to get him. So you have a reminder each month leading up to Christmas. And when the December one comes, you're like, oh, I really got to get some jelly for him now. I only got two weeks or whatever. And metaphorical jelly, jelly, right? Oh, wait, can I just give you your gift now? What? You could. Yeah, it's it should like be literally behind it should really be on in a air. box. Wait, uh, it's it's since oh, we're filming next to me in a box. <laughs> um, it's in studio. I'll well, I, I left your gift at home, so unfortunately, I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, can we do I'll, this? I'll, can we do a gift reveal on the podcast? This, this yes. is appropriate, right? Is that legal? Should we call Tommy? I'm gonna do it. Are you ready, Johnny? Yes. Okay, I'll, you ready, I'll give you guys what I got you too. I'm all over here. <laughs> oh right. God, Johnny, this is gonna go on YouTube, so don't show any any body parts that would so demonetize I'll, I'll, I'll us. I'll preface this by saying I think Luke might like this gift. Because wow, I got that's it. a strong endorsement. I and and I'll say in front of in front of the the live stream audience. Oh fuck! Where is it? <laughs> the box is empty. <laughs> Wait. I I right, while he's looking, I'm going to describe this awesome beer I'm having. It's oh, you started drinking a beer when? Oh, I switched to beer when. Um, <laughs> I'm saying I didn't notice it happened. Oh, I don't know. I'm drinking out of my uh, 20 minutes ago. I'm drinking out of my Spuds oh, McKenzie Bud cool. Light. Yeah, bud. let's say what beer we're drinking. Uh, I'm drinking. It's a modern times. A oh, nice. fruiter aged pilsner, dry hopped with uh, sapphire hops, and so it's kind of that oaky type hoppy pilsner. It's really interesting. Joe got me two um, Yang Gang. Oh my gosh, apparel! Those are awesome. Which, by the way, I still never got, even though I signed up on that list that I sent you the link for the bumper sticker. Yeah, you didn't get that. Really, I never got it, and I signed up for it like at least two days before I saw you and told you about it. Weird. Um, but this is awesome. I'm gonna put them. Potentially on my car, but definitely somewhere. Definitely on your fridge. <laughs> Maybe on my mailbox. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. A lot of people will see that, yeah. I'll put the humanity first one because, you know, the idea of putting a candidate, it's just like everybody does that. Mm. But to put a motto, which yeah, I would say I like that, yeah. humanity first is a really good Yang motto because if you just extract what he does and says, yeah, that's 
what you would derive. Like, yeah, it's it's very nonpartisan. It's nonpartisan. <laughs> He's never shitting on tr- people that voted for Trump. He'll shit on Trump, but not yes. people that voted for Trump. Yeah. He'll say, I Key understand yeah. why they did yeah. what they did. Yeah. He'll also, like, in the latest debate, redirect, like, somebody asked about, like, this autistic person named Kyle is working at a job, blah, 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 about, like, and, and he changed the conversation. He's like, this is not about the economic value of, like, you know. Yeah, I love how when they ask him questions, he takes a second to be like, wait, where did this come from? You were just talking about something completely yeah. different. And it's like, here's a very specific situation. And he, he's he like, gives what? that genuine moment of like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Why are we talking about this? No, I'll definitely. This is, See, this is a good gift. See, I, yeah. I, I knew you'd like that. And That's it's not like I'm going like, oh, shit, Joe bought me a $300 speaker. Like, now I feel bad I didn't get him anything. Oh, no, that was like $7. <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't buy Joe a $7. Um... <laughs> but that's what I mean. If Luke got me a, a bullshit gift, if he got me a $20 uh, Best Buy gift card, that would be really weird. I, I would it would yeah. be so weird. Yeah. I, I, also, you can't get anything I don't think good would, at Best Buy for $20. That's what I mean. I don't think I would take it. If I got you a $200 Best Buy gift be, card, and I know that, that you were- That would also be weird, No, though, but I know you were looking reasons. to buy like no, a, that'd be weird. A, a speaker for your house or something, like, and then you bought a nice Sonos speaker. Um, I happen to really Sonos like those sucks. speakers. I, I have those speakers. Is, is that what they, you got They me? sound beautiful, and, and you can really like- pair different different you can pair versions to be left right channels in a big room i didn't say they don't sound good i just said sonos sucks for the price they, they're shitty um i'm not so sure about that currently i haven't but like when i bought it they're i was pretty happy bros. with it um I, you don't need their software anymore though you can just go through spotify go through well, good um i mean i still I use their software because your speakers I, I i mean i just really <laughs> enjoy sitting in front of it and playing music and like getting nah you don't getting weird um because I, I, I always put it in the corner of a room, and what you do <laughs> is they have this thing called uh, tuning your speaker. Faster. <clears throat> and you walk through the room holding up your phone's microphone. Faster. And the speaker emits, like, futuristic sounds of different frequencies. Oh, it's that's like, kind of cool. Ba-doo, ba-doo, oh, really? Ba-doo. And it figures out in the room what frequencies are being, like, kind cool. of, like, lowered. No, and it's, which frequencies tracking, are it's, reflecting. it's tracking your yeah, position it's mapping your and face. selling it to fucking Amazon. <laughs> That's it's, what it's, it's doing. It's mapping like out face. your face yeah. with sound Dude, waves. Are like, you serious? Yeah. yeah. They track with sound they, waves now. No. Mm-hmm. Basically, why do you what think it's such Batman? a good deal, Luke? It's what it's doing just is like in Batman. How it's they figuring out how to play with its like no, it's um, frequency out how to sell your response data. so that it it yeah. it um uh finds the best balance in that particular room. You're such a rube. So you guys Dude, know I use I got my you? face to unlock my phone every day. If they're if they have my face, they have my face. Holy shit! You're okay with that? Try to unlock my phone. I, no, because I don't want them to know my face. Get them away from yeah. me. Fuck them. I didn't consent to that shit. So what Fuck I got that. you guys is really a thunk tank present because I came up with a new segment. He's going to hang up show. on us. No, I really am not. I have a new segment for the show. Okay. He's going to hang up on us. And it's it's Watch. it's like, a, it's it's. I don't have a name for it yet, but I want to, I think we should be, and I think Joe will like this as a writer. I want to do like a word of the cast thing where we learn a new word. Okay. That I'm pretty sure you guys don't know. I pick a word I don't think you know, and then we try to each it's use it in, in a sentence. Cast. We all try to use it in the cast at some point. And that's a great. Oh, oh best by the end of the cast, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. So, that's a good uh, point. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we can I mean, at least roll with it until we get bored. But yeah. Yeah. Like like but, like so all have, the segments I, we've ever done. Yeah. Exactly. I have the word. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the word first, and then you guys have to try to guess what it means, and okay. then I'll tell you what it actually means. Okay. Yeah. Fabulous. Who? Did you hear that? Say it again. Fibulous. Is it start with an F? Fibulous. 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 B I B U. Isn't it crazy? Because like it's really hard to hear letters with Fibulous. artificial intelligence. Yeah. Say it one more time. Fibulous. Fibulous. I, okay. I, I, hear I hear it fibulous. now. Fibulous. No, I changed it to bibulous. Yeah. No, I did. Bibulous. I'm it saying like work. once I once I switched the letter that I thought it's kind of like that TED talk where you hear it differently once he says. You know, Jesus once said. So, do you want us I to say what it means, supreme. Johnny? And it was very bibulous of him to say so. Do you want oh, us okay. to use it before <laughs> we learn the definition? No, no. Just guess the definition. I'll tell you, and then we we, we should okay. try to use it. Oh, I, I guess that it was. I would Joe say, just used uh, it. In uh, a, I guess that it was drunkenly Bible like. Yeah, bi- bi- it's bi- biblical, biblical in nature. It's a synonym it, for biblical. That's your guess, yeah. both of you. No, mine is if you're drunk and quoting the Bible, you're bibulous. Oh, okay, okay. And Luke, yours is just anything biblical related. Yeah. 
Okay. The uh, answer is the definition is actually excessively fond of drinking alcohol. So Joe was close. Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> You said when you're drunk and yelling about religion, but right. it's, that's yeah, what it means. It. You're excessively fond of alcohol. You didn't nail it. You got part of it. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm giving and you it's, your it's, it's a Latin word, bib- bibulus. Sorry. L-U-S. I'm bibulously. Uh, Bibula, 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 Bibula was such an underrated Roman emperor, first of all. Caligula? No, Bibula. He was he was Cal- Caligula's uh, grand Bib- nephew. Bibula? Bibula? Bibula, he just drank the wine. Yeah, he drank all the wine. Bibula drank so much wine. Isn't it sad that in like Marcus Aurelius's last decade, he kind of figured out that like, I mean, he knew all along probably that his kid was just not a great man. Wasn't it uh, Commodus? Was, yeah, he was going to yeah. become like someone like uh, you know Caligula or Nero or something. You know? But he wasn't even good enough to become Caligula or Nero. He was just kind of whatever. he was just kind of a nothing. Yeah, he was kind of a loser. Yeah, Commodus. Yeah, that's there why, is there is that's an archetype in, that's why in, nobody in the knows human in the yeah. human possibilities called loser. Yeah, that's what I mean. Are you better <laughs> off being good, evil, or a loser? I love right? losers because like they they can't they don't know any better. But this is why we they're love, not even good enough to be why, evil. This is why we love George Costanza. He is he's the too, Commodus of science. He's too ineffective <laughs> to even be good at being evil. Right. He, he would. There are things he does which would if, if would you that isolate he them, were more yeah, smart. If you isolate <laughs> things that he does, they're very evil. But he's not an evil person yeah. at all. Yeah. Oh, all right, like I'm Aaron done. Trump. Say what? What? Oh, <clears throat> I I researched a few like <laughs> holiday stories. All right, I I gotta I gotta take a shit. I'll be right back. All right, All right Johnny. Man. There was a boss who got caught making out with a mop because they got so drunk at a holiday party. Okay, and they got in trouble for it. Well, they just got caught, and like people took video of it. I guess. Oh, I I have a horrifying holiday oh. party story. I just remembered. I was sexually harassed one time. I don't know if I ever told that one on the podcast. Uh, probably wait for Joe to come back. I don't know if one. you told that one to anyone. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I'll wait for Joe to come back. Yeah, that's a fucked up story. Should I tell a few more of mine and you save that one on the queue? Yeah, just I'll, let me write it down so I remember. <laughs> you have to write down that you got... I kind of blocked it out. Gotcha. Um, all right, here's one. Let me ask it to you as a question, Johnny. So if you started working at a new place in September, let's say beginning of the year kind of vibe, you know, like after the summer and you were at the Christmas party and the boss challenged you to a shot contest, would you take it? Depends on the boss. Yes or no. Well, I don't have a boss right now. So it's I know. That's why it's it's premises. And but if. My, if, my, if it was my last boss, I'd say, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Awesome. What if it was like uh, three bosses ago? Yeah. Four bosses ago? No. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to make sure there was a no in there. Yeah. So Definitely this guy on Reddit guy. said, um, I was you know, working at this place, went to their Christmas party. The boss challenges me to a shot contest. Apparently, I blacked out. And when I showed up to work the next day, my nickname from everybody was Steak Pants. <laughs> <laughs> is this a real story yeah and he said i have no idea and nobody will tell me why i have the nickname steak pants but it was in something i did in that blackout period at the christmas party last night <laughs> man that's scary i've never because i always follow my rule i've never been that guy at the christmas what party. do you think he did to get the steak pants nickname like what can you imagine <laughs> I have been to a lot of christmas parties like two years ago i i think yeah i had two i went to two and I've, I got, I've had multiple jobs at a time. So even if you're only a part-time person working one or two days a week, if you're at a place long enough, like for more than a year, you get invited to the holiday party. Yeah. And and I've actually been to a lot. And, and yeah, you, you just got to... I always get very, very drunk. It, it it sucks when you show up and it's like, oh, what like beers we, are? What beers can I get on this tab? And they're like, uh, they're buying... They're just buying Bud Light. Right, right. But right. like, well, whatever. It's either, it's either that or like the plastic bottle, like well shots. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not drinking that stuff. So I guess I'll drink. It's like, or we can bring you a Michelob. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm switching between Michelob and Bud Lights. I'll drink 12 you and get half of them be... free. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like we said in the beginning of the episode, you're able to do that and not really worry. Whereas some people would, would be yeah. worried. Like I have like my three beer limit. And after three beers, I start saying things that I would be embarrassed to, to find out about. 
Like if you're more of a conserved person in your office normally, and then you go to a party and you have like four or five beers and you start being like, yeah, but you've seen the way she looks at you or like, you know, things that like make people go, what the fuck? Like keep that unspoken, you know? And you're just kind of blurting it out because it's not so much that your physical tolerance is bad, but your psychological tolerance towards like dealing with feeling a little bit more slippery and like gooey is not there. You know what I mean? Like you're such a prickly person that you don't know how to live in the gooey world. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I just get loud at parties. I think it just amplifies my regular personality and I get more animated when I talk, but like, I don't really dance or like jump around. Oh, Some yeah, people get too that. physical. You know, they just get touchy or huggy when they drink a lot. People get or so they, touchy. Uh, I, I don't think I really do. Uh. Like, I'm pretty sure I, I don't <laughs> get like that. No, but like, unfortunately, it's mostly like, Go ahead, Luke. Finish the sentence. It's mostly Go ahead. creepy fucking guys getting touchy with girls. Like, as far as I've heard from, like, the attractive girls that I know and have talked to about this, they're always like, ugh, that fucking piece of shit. Like, like. This is why we need UBI, so you can leave those situations. Well, well this cast. is why we. I just took a hard right there. Th- yeah. This Wrong is why cast. we also yeah. need, <laughs> like, like piece of shit guys not thinking that they can touch people like in a creepy weird way yeah well Um, that i mean that's the actual problem like you can't just like put your hand on someone's like lower back when you're just giving them a professional hug like you know like a handshake is the most like i just met you professional thing but if you worked really hard with someone on like a week-long project and it finishes and you're having a glass of wine at like the reception thing after and they give you a really intense touchy thing that's yeah. sexual in nature which we all know as humans when it crosses the line between like accidental like like you could accidentally brush your hand anywhere on a person's body if you get pushed as somebody yeah. walks with a tray of food and like yeah. anything can happen but we all know when something's like yeah actually sexual yeah it's like i might hug luke i've never come close to grabbing his ass Never. Not well, even see, close. The only people that have grabbed my bit. ass while hugging me is like pe- friends that like, <laughs> yeah, like Johnny that like specifically are like, yeah, I'm going to grab Luke's ass. Like, why not? But it's because, also, it's, so because it's so bony. Because it's so bony, I always slap or grab Gat's ass because it makes him uncomfortable too. <laughs> right. So I'm always sexually <laughs> assaulting. Uh, say what it is. Sexually assaulting Luke and Gat because you guys don't have butts. No, but there's a different world of expectation of behavior that that. Um, then again, Gat. I obviously don't interpret that butt. as anything but Johnny just being like hee hee and slapping yeah. my ass. Like I do make that sound sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But like, if you do that at your office Christmas party, that's a no. That's a no go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so especially Josh, if you're an to come old back. fat piece of shit. Yeah. Does yeah. she want you slapping her ass? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. You old piece of shit. Like, yeah. how about this? Sack Just accept shit. your reality. You shouldn't give sloppy wet kisses on the cheek to a girl that's half your age that is only smiling at you because you're going to give her a fifty dollar tip. She's yeah. just thinking, oh, I'll take that that sloppy kiss as a bartender because I know you slip me a 50 every time you're here on the Sunday before Christmas or whatever the fuck it is. But, like, that doesn't make it more right. It just makes you a, a, an old, creepy piece of shit. Yeah. Those people exist. All right, so it was about 10 years like, ago. A, a lot of them. This was probably Oh, the God, first... are you going to tell the, bur- the burrito story? Yeah. Okay. So Joe knows this one. Oh, Joe this does is a, know it. That was at a we holiday party. It, 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 it was a. How did we forget this one? It was. Yeah. This is so a perfect, like, we've been building up to this time. moment. Johnny said he forgot it because he blocked it out. Yeah, it's Probably. traumatic. All right. Well, I. It, in, okay, I haven't heard it. So like, it, it's very. Fact, give me the best telling. In, in fact, just a quick sidebar before I tell the story is uh, during the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. Oh, I remember <laughs> one of these people where it was accusing the lady like this is something that happened thirty years ago and she's just remembering it now. Like that's absurd. This and that. And I was like. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That kind of does make sense. I was like just trying to steel man it, and I was thinking about that. And I was like, yeah, I guess, like, how do you forget something that traumatic and blah, blah, blah? I was like, and I said to my wife, I was like, because I would remember. So she's like, what are you talking about? That did something like that did happen to you. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she mentioned the story. I was like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. I was yeah, like, yeah. I guess that can happen because it was kind of, you know, traumatizing at the time, but not really, but kind of, but. Faster. So it's like, oh, yeah, okay, More. I'm back on that lady's side again. But anyway, so it was like 10 years ago, and I was working at this shitty burrito restaurant, and th- we went to the holiday party, and th- my manager, well, he was like a younger guy. He was only like 10 years older than me, 
Uh, but I was 19 at the time. I was actually in good shape. I, I know it's hard to believe, but I actually looked pretty good at that age. I still had hair. You were in um, Genie, um, like the eight week like yeah. uh, cadet training. I literally, for was like, <laughs> he was he was in Genie Alpha. <laughs> I was like 45 pounds lighter. Yeah. Like I, I was, I was, you know. You got rid of that little kid that drinks athletics. like I a was, quarter of your beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so I, I was working there and like at the Christmas Johnny, party. I, <laughs> I just want to say that? like either your wife is home or a murderer is walking into your house to Jesus kill you. Jesus Christ. What was like that? there was just like a people? yellow figure that like walked in a ghost like way in your background. No, floated in a ghost like way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm in Bigfoot country, so you never know. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I'm sorry. But, so, I hope so, you don't see him get murdered. Uh, so at the party the party was at one of our other locations. This there was like three of these restaurants, so they had it the big one. And then we when we were all just drinking and hanging out, and then we went back to our location in the downtown because we all lived near there to go for like more drinks at the after party. And like it was cool. I was sitting at a bar like smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. People were like doing cocaine on the bar and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. This is what you think bars are gonna be like, and then you go to them and they're not. And then you go to one after it's closed and it is like that, like <laughs> in the movies, and you're like, Oh, yeah, I knew this was nice, happening yeah. somewhere. Uh and he was quite a bibulous fellow that night, let's say. Uh-huh. And, he was, and he was he was wasted and he started hitting on me. So he was preaching from the Bible? No. He was very <laughs> drunk and he was like so drunk and hitting on me and the but not able to like focus his eyes. It well, is oh my Kara. god, it was Kara. <laughs> Thank God. It's Kara. Hi Kara. Kara, we thought you were a ghost. She can't hear us. Hey Kara. <laughs> Uh, they, said they thought you were a ghost when you went by and they said hello. No, I was thunkceptioning. I was listening to the Thanksgiving episode and then watching Johnny film this one. So Whoa. That's pretty cool. It's oh, a Christmas yeah. miracle. Behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> it's a festivist miracle. A little bit. Uh, so anyway, so he started like hitting on me and then he started offering me oral sex uh, very emphatically. <laughs> That's the only way I felt anywhere it. close to and a I, woman is when gay guys I, like overly hit on I me. I tried to tell him like, no, I'm not gay, man. Like, I'm not into guys. Like, I'm, and he's like, you don't have to be. He's like, I'm really good at it. He's Trust like, it's me, just I'm a mouth. It feels the same. He's like, yeah. He's like, I. Uh, he's like, <laughs> I better transcend and then, gender. And then he offered to give me <laughs> a raise does, if I let him <laughs> give me a blowjob. He offered you what? A raise. A raise. Oh my oh, god. Yeah, that's that's illegal. That's that's quit. And I still like said no. About as quitty as it gets. Laughed it off. Trump's and I went like, to the other end of the bar, <laughs> and like he was so drunk, he didn't realize everyone there heard him. Oh shit! Including like people he works with and stuff, <laughs> and like his friends and things. And like I was the underage guy; I shouldn't even have been drinking. I was like nineteen or twenty at the time. Um, but it was before nine eleven, so. <laughs> and they just kind of let me. It was drink. <laughs> <laughs> But it was, uh, and then, and then, sorry so to be joking they, about your they, trauma. They shut Johnny. the restaurant down. <laughs> they shut the restaurant down for three weeks after the holiday party to renovate the whole kitchen. Like it was a planned closing. It was a college town. It was dead anyways that month. Yeah. So I was like, okay, and it was like, so we all were going to come back. And we all had jobs and everything, and we were told on in a, in a group email, come back at this date, like report in at this time and this date. So I show up, and everyone's like scared to see me and confused. I'm like, what's going on? They're like. Uh, like they, we heard you got fired, and I was like, "What? No! Like they, we were all supposed to come back, like today." And like, no, like you didn't get the second email. We've all been here for a week already. Like we're opening tomorrow. They came back early, and I was like, "Oh!" And I, I, I went talk. I, I like tried to find the guy, and he avoided me. Weird. And somebody else told me they're like, "Yeah," and I told him what happened. He's like, "No, I heard." He's like, "But this guy went to school. Like he grew up with the owners, and like so, so he they're just, gonna he just found a way to get story. rid of you because you could and have he, been a liability." Yeah, and he was just embarrassed, and like you know, and they were like, "This is a young kid, and he's." You could hop on the Me Too movement, dude. And so (laughs) I got laid off. But but the thing is, I was I was really annoyed. I was really annoyed. But he said, "Pure form." He told me I finally talked to him, and he was like, "Well, sorry, but there must have been a miscommunication (laughs) because we've already replaced your position, and (laughs) blah blah blah." And when I started complaining and asking what it was for, he's like, "Well, you're going to get unemployment, so don't worry." Like. Oh, so well, he, paid well, he paid you off with unemployment. <laughs> he did, That's and amazing. I got, I got a lot. I got like, I was only making like two hundred, three hundred a week, cause like dishwashing and fry cooking. It wasn't a lot of money, but uh, I, my unemployment was approved for like two fifty a week, and I got it. And it was right around when Obama extended, so I ended up working there for six months, and I got unemployment for that job for like eighteen months. See, if you had had UBI, you could have said "fuck you" 
I'm suing I could've, your ass. But I took the money and kept my mouth shut. Yeah. I ended up dropping out of school that semester anyways because I couldn't pay my bills. So it did have a, an effect on my life. But if I had just let the guy have sex with me, I might have gotten my undergrad. He only wanted to give you a blowjob, you said. Well, yeah, yeah that's I, how it you starts. Know, I was really, and it, and like, Sounds like is that so out. bad? It's really, the ultimate fear is the bait and switch. You know? Yeah, no, that's what I mean. That's how I'm it kidding, starts, by yeah. the way. That's gross and disgusting that a person in power would try to exploit a lower person sexually to... Um, to no, I really enjoyed it and to, losing my job and getting... To and hang out a carrot on a great. stick. <laughs> with, uh, Thanks for uh, pointing uh, that of out. Of a job. <laughs> I never and, thought of it that way. Uh, with regards to <laughs> something sexual. Like, there's no doubt no, it was that's great. It totally ruined my life at the time. It was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me that it's bad, though. I, I forgot that. Uh, I would say you're accepting that it's bad and then moving on is the healthiest way forward. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Not Thanks forgetting for it. Head, Luke. Not forgetting it and only remembering it on an episode of the Thunk Tank podcast where we're talking about Christmas parties. Oh, yeah. This is that episode. <laughs> So I just want to wrap up with a serious point up. that I learned. <laughs> but oh, wait, like, we... the guy got real grabby. I had to like physically push myself away at one point because he was just like that drunk like people get and they just like are yeah. dripping, but falling. By all the over way, you. though, that, that that's a, that's a worthy. Um, that's a that's a, a, it was a great party before difference that. between um, like as a man, it's very rare that you'll have to worry about a woman overpowering you sexually and in terms of like someone who wants to be with you but you don't want to be with them when you're a man and a gay person like a a, a a bigger gay man is hitting on you there there can be that same power dynamic but often it's the case that you're still able to like realistically defend yeah. yourself um well, it's the implication. It's, I mean, as as Dennis Reynolds would say, it's the implication. No, it um, is though, right? It, it is yeah. though. Like you won't even. The, the idea is you won't even fight in a fight that you'll clearly lose. Exactly. Yeah, it's not worth fighting. If there's yeah. like a a bouncer at a bar level strength person that like right. this is what happens in prison, right? Like you. Go ahead, mommy. Tell me. I mean, you you have nowhere to run, and this person is just in control. Like that's just what happens. Is that what happens? Um, so, it, uh, I, w I would say, just like the Joe Rogan stand-up, where he talks about, like, the difference between, like, a 15, 16-year-old girl being in a relationship with, like, the 22-year-old teacher, and the flip side of that, like, the 25-year-old, 22-year-old teacher who's a female hooking up with, like, the 16-year-old guy. Like, he's famous for coming on the record as saying, like, those are not the same. He well, goes, that's the, they might both be wrong, but yeah. they're different degrees of wrong. Well, South Park addressed that too, where they had that ho that whole episode where the teacher was hooking up with, I think it was Kyle's like, you know, second grade yes. brother or something, <laughs> and they go to the cops, and Kyle's like, the teacher's having sex sex, you know, with my sibling, and they go, oh my god, you did the right thing coming to us. Tell us more, like what happened. <laughs> He says, well, you know, he blah, blah, blah. And they say, wait, you mean he the teacher? And he's like, no, he my brother. And they go, nice. <laughs> yeah, and then they see the picture of her and they go, nice. Yeah, they're just like, nice. And he's like, no, it's fucked up. It's wrong. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, well, What yeah, about when both cool. positions are male or both positions are female? It, like it, in my case, it was an older male in a position of power. And a well, younger that's where it gets complicated, man. Or what I, about I, if it's well, a female teacher and a female student? Well, the, Johnny, then you have the 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 there's the physical version of the the hierarchy this that, is the that best you live in, episode. and then there's also like the the sort of power version in terms of like the hierarchy of the company, right? Yeah, and or in the hierarchy of the individual. I think if you abuse yeah. your power either physically or power wise in terms of hierarchy in a company to try and get somebody to do something sexually. We should find a way to, in the cases where it, it hits against the law, make that like very definitely illegal. And in the cases where it's like in that fuzzy in between thing, we should mm -hmm. socially label that as like abhorrent behavior that, like, when discovered, gets you fired, gets you shamed by the community. Because if you're as as using know, power still there, in a know? company to try what? and get people to sexually do things, like, like that's fucked, and and that that that, that shouldn't be the way it is. You should have power in a company, and then people respect that because it's like a valid company and like a hierarchy that isn't all corrupted. And then the women in well, that company I've also that know you jobs. will naturally want to be with you because like you're you're a decent person who Wait, works so their this, way up the hierarchy. This is just your long-winded way of getting laid. <clears throat> I'm saying that's yeah. the way that like women tend to 
tend to pick men that are higher up in the hierarchy, and men tend How to settle with women that gender? are lower in the hierarchy. Oh, boy, here he goes. Going? Here he goes. How is this about gender inequality? Here he I goes. This is about holiday parties. I'm what saying happened? that, like... People hook up at holiday parties. It's a classic time when, like, uh-huh. all year you've been flirting. Yeah. I, I still got to ask Joe. That's we'll a, we'll, we'll end on this. You're at a holiday party, right? You just started a job in September at a new company. Sure. Make it whatever you can imagine in your mind's eye. Vandalay Industries. Yeah. Sure. And you're at the holiday party. The boss is a pretty cool guy. You don't quite know him well yet, though. Is she hot? Because you don't see them. And, wow. and um, Johnny, you choose. Is it a, a girl or a guy? Wow. You know, fems can be thems, okay? Can you choose? <laughs> can you choose one of three, I, then? I don't choose for other you know, people, that was the Luke. All That's right, the whatever. Your boss challenges you at shit. the Christmas party to, an, to, to a shot contest. I'll do an arm wrestling contest. Yeah, they I'm not say, doing shot contest. do a shot contest with me. I'm not doing that. And they hint at you that if you do the shot contest, that th- that they can basically, like, get you into this this uh job that opens secret society like there's no no they're supposed to do like an interview process but they kind of be a mason they kind of hit with you as they're chilling with you at the cocktail hour they're kind of like hey you know like by the way this job open but that's i'm I'm supposed to hire from the outside but but i'm pretty sure if i convince them you're cool yeah i'm pretty sure if i convince them of your case yeah i could get you into the job and you go you know, I would actually not only be genuinely interested. So it's a job that you want, but that's just it pays shit. three times what you make now. So All right, think of that so, now. So would you rather be Weinsteined or? <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, ten minutes later, he wants to do a shot. Oh shit! I just said he. <laughs> this person wants to do a shot contest with you. Yes or no? What does that mean? What is a shot contest? Every time one of you says shot, the other person has to do one. No. Otherwise, they lose. Absolutely if not. If you say no any time, you lose. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a thumb wrestling competition with By you. By the way, anybody who would like challenge you to a shot contest is probably better than you at doing shots. That's the first criteria <laughs> that I thought of. They're trying yeah. to get me hammered and have their way with me. I would say no. Yeah, yeah, no, no way. Yeah. I, I'll I'll do an arm wrestling competition or thumb wrestling because I'll probably beat you. I would say yes, and then do two, three shots, and I then say I, I I no because now now you're no going no. Down but the if slope. you do two, three, and say I lose, yeah, but now they, you're they've still but, kept that positive impression. Yeah, but of now you. you're a cuck. Mm, but you're not a cuck in as much as you're using them and pretending to be a cuck to get what you want. Unless he wakes up the next morning and says, "Wow, that was a weird party." Who but you, you only did three shots, and you know that, like, yeah, but he did not. You're three. Sh- I know, so you're smarter than him. Yeah, but he doesn't remember even offering you the job. You're just a you're cuck smarter who drank, than them. Drank more and Joe, lost the contest. You're smarter than them. I think you Joe. think that you're smarter than them. I think I know that you think that you think that you're smarter than them. Do you see what I think? I do the three, four shots and then say, I'm out, boss. You just want free liquor. No, I don't. I want to get the promotion. You're not going to. He's going to black out. He's not going to remember offering you dick. He remembers the cocktail hour where he said, I offer you this position. And he'll also remember that I was the cool guy that accepted his fun challenge and then lost because he's awesome. I only lost because he's awesome. That's what he thinks. Why do you want to cater to this dickhead? Tell him to go fuck him. To get the promotion. He's the dumb one. He's giving me three times as much money even though I played him. I don't think that's what happens, Luke, is you You, clearly never worked a real job. I haven't. And as I always say, if anybody listening has a job that they could offer me, I will take it. But Luke, if you show you're gonna show back up to work after the party in January <laughs> or whenever, and they're gonna say, What are you doing? And you're gonna be like, What do you mean? I'm here and they're gonna say, Well, after what we heard at the like he's he fired you. He's like, Well, I can't like I'll lose my job if I promote somebody for saying that. <laughs> Like you're just gonna show up and your job's gonna be gone. And they're like, yeah, he said that you were se- pr- you were trying to have sex with him to get a raise or something, and they said they had to fire you over. Yeah, and, and I have no no. Proof. It is the uh, what? I have no proof. Yeah, yeah, you're you just no hung proof. over. That's what fuck. would happen. Because yeah. that's what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, but like the point is, like in that scenario, it was more of like the bro boss that's just wanting to like yeah. hang out. It's not the yeah. I don't the, think I want to work the, for the this guy company. that wants to suck your dick. No. This is why we need UBI. It wouldn't have to work for that company. Well, it, it, w- what UBI would do is give you a safety <laughs> net that says you'll still be able to keep your apartment and live. Yeah. And and you have the flexibility of multiple years to figure out your life path if you realize that, like, I want to re-up and I'm going to eat cans of beans and veggies as all my meals for a long time. Not that I don't until, already do that. Yeah. Well, I already do that because it's healthy and, like, I just don't get I do, too. I get pleasure out of food on the level of like. Yeah, what but then I the landlords night, raise everybody's food. rent eight hundred dollars a month, and you quit your job, and now you're actually losing money because UBI doesn't work. 
Uh, well, we already had that episode. <laughs> yeah, can we just end it? No, I know, but you just we should said end like this. We, me and Joe got to get to a Christmas party. Yeah, we got we got to roll. You're the one trying to shoehorn UBI into the uh, <laughs> Christmas episode. Well, Joe gave me Not the me. gift of humanity first. I did know? give him the gift of humanity first. That's Folks, true. Humanity first. Humanity first. Is it backwards on the camera? Four score and humanity you know. ago. I'm into humanity, just not, you know, giving your part of humanity anything. That makes sense. Whatever. I don't know what that means, so no, it doesn't it doesn't make it sense. Do- <laughs> it doesn't make no sense. And twas the night before <laughs> Festivus and all through the house, Johnny spoke Fuck. and spoke, but it I just it realized wouldn't make sense. We have to go to this <laughs> holiday bowling party and keep drinking. I'm I know hammered, it's hammered, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this oh, was man. the plan going this in though. This is a terrible plan. You guys should take some videos of you bowling, doing some trick shots. Oh, this isn't podcast. gonna end well. It's gonna end so well. We're gonna <laughs> chug water. We're gonna re up. I've been chugging water, but I'm get some pictures you've of been Miller chugging Light. water. Have you not? No. <laughs> I'm on my fourth pumpkin beer, my other <laughs> beer that I don't forget the name of. I mean, I don't remember the name. Of. Plus all that schnapp. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. All right, Johnny. All right, well, um, well, thank you for joining us. I hope you all have happy holidays. <laughs> you're a good man, Johnny. You keep. <laughs> Thanks, you- buddy. You too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for a fantastic... This is probably our last episode this year, right? No. I, I do plan to, if I can get to it, release a best of 2019, like clip That's together an hour of like random clips. Happen. Oh, that could happen. I'm going to be like but hanging the, out for a day. We should, in po- between we Christmas should post this pretty soon so that it can be out for Christmas. Right? My schedule after Christmas nah. up until New Year's is so open. That's why I, I plan on doing it. Okay. Well, thank you all for right, joining then. us. I hope you all have a thank you. Johnny, leave us with a Christmas message. You know how Linus says like the <laughs> true meaning of Christmas? Yeah. And can you sing it? In a you know how, poetic like, form. Cho- they make no, fun I, of Charlie Brown. No, they go no. like, what the fuck is this small little Christmas tree you got, you piece of shit? And then Linus goes, Charlie Brown, like, I can tell you the true meaning of Christmas, right? Give us that. Dun, dun, oh, the, the, the true meaning of Christmas? Dun, yeah. Dun, dun. Uh, I, w- I would say it's to like, share, and imbibe. And and th- I li- mean that literally, to, to enjoy okay. the time, yeah. to like things, have joy and stuff, to share it with others, gifts and gifts, and to imbibe spiritist li- liqueurs and, and whatnot, and cordials. And to, let's to say you're not drinking, spirit, so. because like you shouldn't, because every time you have in the past, it's gone bad, then imbibe in the spirit of it. Yes. Metaphorically yeah, You can imbibe non-alcoholic imbibe. eggnog. It's still something to cheers with. Or or ho, the ho, first ho. two, right? You or the sparkling really the cider, alcohol. for example. Have a glass of sparkling cider while everyone else has, has champagne. Have a cup of tea. Whatever. Whatever it it's is. It's about the spirit. Yeah, have a hot dog. In yourself. the spirit of care. you're sharing this earth with other human beings. <laughs> and if you lived alone on a desert <laughs> island, you would be miserable. You need the other human beings. You oh like them. God. You want them. What are you be nice to them. About? <laughs> if you were alone on a desert island, you'd be miserable. What is a desert island? It's it's just a it's, patch of sand. It's just an island it's where it's you alone. You'd be stuck in your own thoughts it's with a, only it's other a desert mammals. island. But does it have cacti have on it? And mac because deserts have like lizards macaroons and shit. from the ingredients. Point on being, macaroons. You need the other human beings. So be nice to them. Right. Not like nice only in December or around Christmas. Right, Be fine. nice every fine. I part, guess I part will. of the year. Fine. See how I didn't tell people what to do or how to live? You see the difference here? You also have a hanger hanging from the... I'm not telling them what to do. I'm telling them that they they, um, they, they might, what, might, yeah. might do it. They, they, they what? They might for 17 years now? They might experiment <laughs> with it. Celebrate. For 17 days of Christmas. You know, they're supposed to be 12. I tacked on another five. Why not? Let's do it. 17 so days. Now we got 17 days. Well, you 17 know, if you, days. if you work out for 17 days, you're that yeah, much You're going to do your hour clip uh, episode is just going to be... <laughs> we well, have at least an hour of us. Yeah, it's the best economy. bits for at the least year. seventeen minutes. Oh, I mean, I could find seventeen minutes. I wouldn't be surprised if I could find seventeen minutes seventeen times. Seventeen seconds 17 on top time. of that, Johnny. What is seventeen times seventeen? <laughs> well, you know, that's when you that's when you really start got count lay out all those seventeens. Well, it's, you got to do seventeen. It's at 17 least seventeen times. It's at least seventeen and a half. All right, uh, we should go to the party. Oh God, that's right. Okay, yeah, we're in very different wavelengths. I've had one beer, and I'm about to like go cook dinner. And <laughs> oh, watch shit! And Netflix. the sun so is like are... long down here. And yeah, it's still sunny. Uh, well, it's not sunny. Out, we're on beer five and whiskey. I don't know how you count whiskey. I finished the bottle. <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> oh, whiskey is the life of man, still. though. Well, All right, I, I switched um, the schnapps, which I can barely well, say. It's, go it's, celebrate. It's, Whiskey's a great. It's a holiday episode, so we're not going to hang up on you. The base word. What? We're not going to hang up on you. 
Well, whiskey is great. Go enjoy some whiskey at the bowling alley. All right. Or Us- Uskaba. Merry Christmas, the, the Johnny. The water of life. <laughs> Oh, we oh, hung up crap. on him. I tried to like lizard him. Okay, oh, so we did hung up on him. We did <laughs> hung oh up on him. Oh, the video ended. So, <sighs> so is the episode over? Yeah. So it's not recording. No, it is. Oh, I'm just saying, like, this is for audio only. How, how are we getting to this party? Uber. <laughs> Maybe one of our listeners can call us an Uber. If just you... give me your address. <laughs> God no. Um. So thank you. Uh. Merry Christmas. If uh, you celebrate Christmas piece of shit no you could you could uh, find happy holidays you hear that i forget god never mind i don't even remember the company but somebody got in trouble for saying merry christmas My somebody f- like complained <laughs> to hr and like it turned into a whole thing that like made national news because like this the company was like almost firing somebody or something because they said merry christmas to someone who you was had, offended by that you know it's funny the uni- but luckily i think it didn't like, one, one of out. the universities i work at which is very sort of uh politically correct Christmas Hanukkah shit everywhere that people just hang up because people like it whenever I see business I feel like I want to be triggered still good for business right well it's still just what people do yeah but anybody could see that and say uh uh uh, yeah and freak out yeah uh where's the other stuff it's like what other stuff it makes no sense there's no consistency to it yeah all right uh thanks for listening um uh, think of this as your um, Christmas gift from your us to you. office party in podcast form, meaning that it was a waste of time. It was definitely a waste of time. And yeah, for sure. Maybe you'll get it back in the new year. <laughs> yeah, look forward to new years, new times, new chances to not listen to us. Okay, bye bye now. Yeah, please have fun. All right, thanks everyone for listening to the Funk Tank podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, If you want to help us out, please consider leaving a rating or a review wherever you listen to podcasts and uh, share it with people you think might like it. And if you really want to support us, you can go over to patreon.com slash thunktankpodcast. We have links to this in in the episode description and other places. And for as little as $1 an episode, you can help us keep the lights on. And you also get access to a very special drunk tank uh, feed of episodes. So... Every few episodes, we'll have a few more beers and record an extra 20 to 30 minutes of extra thunky, silly, uh, whateverness. So there's a separate RSS link you can get from there. And if you put that into a podcast player, you'll get your own separate feed of only the drunk tanks. I think we have about six or seven of them out already and more to come. Thanks for listening and stay funky.